All right, people are saying we live and it's good. Yeah. Hello. Sorry, guys. Oh, I got it. There we are. Yeah. Okay. It's like the Brady Bunch. What's up, patrons? Hope y'all are uh, staying mm. safe, staying healthy, taking your vitamins. Uh, we about to we about to go live. We got Kev on stage in the building. What up? These things are fun. It's like I'm hanging out with my friends in a quarantine. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> yeah. The safest, but the safest of ways. Right. Cool. Sorry about that uh that mishap, guys. Uh, we're trying out this this new format. Oh, so no, keep the show going. Fun. And uh just took a little little troubleshooting to get it going. You know what I'm saying? You took you you be troubleshooting. What are you doing right now? Stop it. None of that is working. I gotta stop. I got I kinda just troubleshooting. I just was doing it. See, this is why we shouldn't have done four episodes. <laughs> we burned out slowly. Four episodes would have been a lot. Then to have to do this. Yeah. You were trying to do four pack. You knew you had to do this. I didn't know y'all had to do this. What? Yeah. You I didn't knew you had to shoot this. I was, I was trying to do four. Yeah, I was just trying to get them knocked out. You know, I like. Oh yeah, you're right. It wasn't here. It wasn't you, Pat. My bad, bro. It's digital. I have way more free time. This is way easier than going to the valley. <laughs> Why do you have to restart it uh, to here? Because when you start the live on uh, Zoom, it asks you then how you want to list the video. So even after I st- oh, tried it. to change it on YouTube, it had already did it since I initiated it off of Zoom. Got it. So got it wouldn't it. let me do it. So I had to literally restart it. I, I said I got it a couple of times. You, you just kept it. So me. then I had to like delete the post. <laughs> <laughs> He's just going to keep playing this. So what I had to do is, so the internet, it goes up into the sky. You can you, uh, what up, y'all? What's going on, patrons? Oh, there's a couple of y'all in here. That's what's up. The uh, chat's lit. What Listen, is- man, um, this will be our format, hence going forth, uh, because of that Rona. You know what I mean? So we had to figure out how to uh, supplement these episodes. Um, and this is how we're going to do it, because we can't, we, we can't uh, be around each other right now for the safety of uh, social distancing. Uh, when that said, let's get to cursing. Why? <laughs> what? I put it in my Patreon. I said, I said, I'm shooting uh, DIYs with Pat and Tahir. Come in if you don't mind cussing. You know what I mean? So we <laughs> stay out if you mind cussing. Because to... <laughs> I be having some people that are like, "Kev, I come to you for clean content only," and then it's cussing. I'm out of here, and I'd be like, "Bro, my friends be cussing." And this is their <laughs> I'm stuff. sorry. And right. one time pretty, somebody pretty was saying, somebody was mad me. because I was, we were shooting an episode of. Um, we were shooting an episode of uh, Unpopular Opinion, and we started talking about Nicki Minaj's verse on Monster, and we played it, mm-hmm. and they was like, is- everything was cool, but then y'all played that um, that Monster verse, and I just feel like that's not clean content. I was like, bro, I, I be listening to rap. I don't, something about me made you think I don't be listening. I listen to the cuss. <laughs> the cuss? I listen to the rapping cuss. They I used to like buy clean albums up Nicki until Nicki like three, three years ago. But it ain't even you. It was Nicki Minaj. I know, but she didn't want to hear no cussing. She said sometimes she watches stuff with her kids. Mm. Uh, Let me uh, turn the notifications off my computer because it's going crazy right now, bro. All right. You could have just done that. (laughs) My shit blowing up right now. (laughs) Start tucking the gun in like this. Is that a real gun? Yeah. Just in case they purge, you know what I'm saying? That's what everybody's worried about. Nah, this is fake. This is very fake. I can't tell. I don't know that much about weaponry. I'm trying to get a gun. I'm going to try to get a gun this week. Who are you finna kill? Anybody who try it. Hey, you looking strong on the pull-ups, man. I was like, man, hey. look at that. Hey. I told you, man. Pat was not going to pull us out. I'm I, out. Point to I, I tried to hold him back during the fight. I was like, yo, he's strong. I'm trying to be able to do 50. That'd be crazy. <laughs> what are you at now? 20. Oh, okay. That's a solid. That's solid. That's solid. All right, well, um, let's go ahead and get it cracking, man. What's up? I'm to hear more. Oh, you want to do the, uh, we're recording? And yeah, we're recording. Recording and streaming. All right, let's get it. What up? I'm to hear more. I'm Patrick Cloud. And this is another episode of Damn Internet. You're scary.
hey, we're on a quarantine. <laughs> With the homie Young Kev on stage. Up, bra, 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 bra. Everybody's everybody's finding their inner gangster during this quarantine. I got the I like this gun wouldn't do that much damage. <laughs> well, um, how, how, how you want to do uh do this, Pat? I think I think I honestly think that the song might work like this. I I, I do too. Like I said, I think if we don't move, like we just do it with our mouths, like make the beats with our, our mouth. Why can't we move? There's less there's less delay when there's less movement. And that counts for the audio too. Well, the delay is the movement because it's trying to track you. So uh -huh. I think if you like, if we do it like this, like this is fine, like this type of stuff. But like, if we beating like this, I think it creates a delay. All right, let's let's try to make history right now. Uh, live stream, beatbox, rap, freestyle. What what genre are we going with? Man, Kev, what you want to go with, bro? You the guest. Pick one. Crap. Huh? Trap again? I want Man. more, more. <laughs> you can take more. <laughs> little Uzi album just came out. Let's do a little Uzi beat. Okay. Uh, I'll do the beat. You guys can have the bars. All right, All right. let's do it. You do the beat with your mouth, or you do it with the computer? No, I do it with my mouth. Pause. Ah, cool. All right. Ah. Let go. Let go. Uh. Damn it, and that you scary. Yeah, on the mic one two. Yeah, on the beat do do do. Ah. Every head cap. Every head cap. <laughs> Never had a kid. Okay, you know what? You know what it is? Hold on, Pat. Hold on a second. When one person starts talking, it mutes the other person. Like while you were doing the beat when I started uh, rapping, uh, the beat muted. So I couldn't really hear. Uh, that's where that's where the drawback is. Uh, that's why people don't do this. <laughs> yeah, I was like, bro, I can't hear Pat that much no more. So in your ears, you just heard me completely lose, like, it was just like, it was just like, mm-hmm. <laughs> Sound like a little. It like, totally oh. tuned out. And it makes sense, because, like, every time somebody else starts talking, that little box shifts from whoever's talking to the new person that's that starts. what that is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, then we're not going to do a song today. Forget you guys. You guys get it. We're in a quarantine. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? <laughs> Rona is the bearer of bad news. Bro, we almost didn't do this. We couldn't figure out how to do this at first, man. So the fact that we got this far, man, hey, man. We all spent and not just do the podcast? No, nah, we're not. We were just trying to figure out what was the best way to go about, like, FaceTime and all that. Because I was, I forgot about Zoom because, like, you, a lot of companies don't use it. Just phone in. So I completely forgot about Zoom. Mm -hmm. as a as a as an option until we start talking about it for the squad cast. We should have just did it in like two hazmat suits. <laughs> thought about that too. <laughs> I thought about that for Righteous and Ratchet. I was like, okay, if Doughboy just sits on the couch and I sit on the chair and we stay six feet away from each other, does that count? So you guys would just social distance in the podcast. Way? Yeah, I mean this is the best version of that though. This is way better. And the thing is, I was around a lot of people last week. Before the order to stay at home came, I was like, man, let me just shoot a whole bunch of videos in case they lock us down, which they did literally the next day. Right. So I was like, I need two weeks away from people. I, in case I, I told y'all my homie at the Pentagon was going to tip. I told y'all they came no. through. Oh, no. okay. I was like, bro. A national lockdown. Which it might still be. Bro, now, Trump talking about lifting the ban because he worried about the economy more than anything. Bro, if we if make we, up the economy. What happens if we die? <laughs> that's the problem. The thing about it is if you have, we don't have, the thing, in order to make drastic changes, things have to be drastic. Yeah. And they, like Italy's news, 300 people dying a day. Spain is like 479 people died yesterday. People going to be like, all right, bro, I'm not. Wait, whoa. Yeah. The two things that are that are hurting us the most is it's not 
as drastic in America with the deaths as it is in other countries. And two, people are like, if I get it, it's just like the flu. I can handle that. Yeah. If it was something like like we were watching Outbreak the other day, you got that. It was you were dead in eight hours. Mm-hmm. Something like that, people would be like, okay, Man. I'm not risking nothing. Right. What, if it was, what if it was airborne herpes? <laughs> people would for sure be inside. That would be almost crazier than your the the outbreak one, <laughs> bro. If you if that means you could get herpes without even having sex. That would be the worst thing ever. Hey, sure, people, you could go into Ralph's and leave with a uh, cold sore. Everybody was <laughs> they, they still be trying to lie about it. They'd be like, "No, nah, ain't, ain't nothing wrong. What are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> I, I ain't going outside. What do you mean? What?" what but there's still people in Florida, like at the beaches, like, man, I ain't scared of a little herpes. <laughs> I'm telling you, because they were like, young people, they really, they, 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 they don't, they'll be fine. And people was like, oh, bro, like, when you, spring break or a little flu, I could get the flu anyway. Like, nah, bro, we need, we, was, we all got to work together. There's been 14 this. cases of, I think, uh, people under 30 that have contracted uh, COVID-19. Indeed. Yeah, that whole that whole is just for old people was I feel like that was just wishful thinking from young people. I don't think any oh. medical people to, to, told us that. The worst thing about that is old people are hearing the news like it's really terrible for old people, but young people, you're fine. Like, bro, I'm I'm old. Yeah, I don't right? suck. That suck. I didn't even think about that. They're just reading the headlines. Good news, it only kills old people. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I'll tell you what did it for me though, because I was looking at these large numbers and not even really batting an eye. But when Tom Hanks got it, <laughs> bro, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm be real with you. The I bought thing, Clorox that day. <laughs> the, the whole NBA thing, I was like, oh, well, they're invested in them. They're, these, they're players already cost, these players cost hundreds <laughs> of millions of dollars. They're invested in the players. But when Tom Hanks called it, it wasn't even the NBA for me. It was Tom Hanks. This is America's dad, bro. Mm-hmm. Hey, he was my dad. Like, yeah, I got it. Yeah. And now he ain't my dad, about. is he? Yeah. <laughs> Is hey, when, uh, when his wife, Rita, was rapping that OPP, that's all I, I, the first thing I thought was like, this is where Chad gets it from. This okay. <laughs> Chad being the, the, the son of those two is the most random thing on the internet, by the it way. It is. <laughs> Out of everybody. That, that lets me know like... why Tom picked Rita, though, because she had a little edge to it. She probably was the type that, like, Took him to like Tom probably wanted to kick it in like Manhattan. She was like, "Nah, we got to go to Harlem, baby." And that's why, I, that's why Tom got it. He was like, "Oh, she a real one." Black <laughs> people love when white people do our stuff, and then we don't like it. It's like we it's we, so we can't be consistent. We're not consistent with white people can do it or not. Wait a that's minute, why, we're not consistent with anything. That's really. why I'm feeling bad for some white people because we be like when they be doing certain things, we be like, "Oh, check Johnny out," and then <laughs> the very next person be like, "No, nah, this." That's a uh, cultural appropriation. It's like, we, we <laughs> like want that, them to music. The little white girl who was rapping, we were like, man, shut up. Tom Hanks' wife? Yeah, girl, you're spitting. Like, what? what? <laughs> Come on, read a boo. Come on. We like her. You we see, were yeah, mad. We used to be like cool with Miley Cyrus. Like, then we hated her. Then we like Billy. We'd be like Billy Ray Cyrus because he was being himself. We'd be, right. we'd be all over the place, bro. We do not be consistent with our hate bro. and our love. Bro, think about how inconsistent our lingo is. I have this whole thing about, like, I understand why, ling- why white people have no idea what we're talking about. Because at some point, we were just like, oh, man, that's bad. And they were like, it's bad. And they're like, no, that's a good thing. We're like, it's like... What? We are, we are nonsense. We say nonsense. Bro, I made this video a couple weeks ago where the phrase you straight can mean eight different things. <laughs> Just by the tone, the context, I could be checking up on you or I could be challenging you to square up. Bro. Like, it just depends. And you won't know. Certain messages, like if I'm texting with somebody, certain messages I have to send through the voice memo. Because if you don't, under, if you don't hear my tone, yeah. you will think that I mean something else. Right, like it could be whatever. Oh, that's true. It be, yeah, it could be whatever. Could literally mean, oh yeah, I go wherever. Or it could be like, oh, it could be whatever. Bro, <laughs> see, but it depends on how, what words you're you're emphasizing. Oh, yeah, it could true. be whatever. It's like, oh yeah, I don't mind Red Robin, Applebee's. It could be whatever. But it could be whatever. Right. <laughs> but through text, you can't like unless you're gonna put all caps or like for the words you're trying to emphasize. You like if somebody texts you like, what's up, and then you text them back. Oh, it could be whatever. They'd be like, whoa, what happened? I just, right. I said hello. I said salutations. Well, there's, there's a few emphases that are confusing. Like, it can be whatever. Oh, or yeah. like, it can be whatever. <laughs> or just that, or emphasizing B. 
It can be whatever. Or, or just an exclamation point on it. It could be whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just a crazy person. <laughs> it can be whatever. That's probably the most confusing one. <laughs> <laughs> that's the crazy person. <laughs> For real, though. <laughs> the thing about it that's so interesting is when you're black and you understand it, you don't even, it's not even a thing you have to think about. It just makes sense to you. And like, I, like catch a fade. That was a new lingo for me to hear a bit about that. When I got to LA, LA, LA like, bro, we could run the fade. I was like, I'm sorry. I, what are you? you under my hat? I did not know what people were saying. And then to hear had a joke about it. And I was like, yes, to hear, I did not know. And nowhere I lived, anybody else said catch a fade, run a fade. They always meant actually that's fading wild. your hair right like you had to i had to learn that that's not what they meant they meant a different type of fade Bruh. that is a big part of moving somewhere is just learning like all right what are the black people here talking about because it's not it's never lingo in any other culture it's always just like all right what do black people here say <laughs> one of the things that i heard before i moved to la was like yo do not wear no baseball caps oh yeah out of the of the of the tin because they were like bro the mariners hat because i used to have a whole bunch of mariners hats when i when i moved from seattle uh -huh. They were like, bro, do not wear those down there. And I was like, why? Like, what do the Mariners? They're like, bro, the Mariners mean a whole different thing. Is that the one there. with the Stingray on it? The what now? Is that the Stingray one? Uh, no, that's the one with the Mariners. Uh, that's on the it. S with the, like, the ball. And it, it, it literally looks, it has that big old, like, nautical symbol yeah. on it. Bro, oh, every, yeah, that's a no. Every so they were like, just don't wear baseball caps at all because they some of them are have been claimed. Bro, yeah. everyone. Well, all of them. Everyone of them kept, like, LA is so selfish. They are a lot of people make jokes about, you know, the gay community having all the colors of the rainbows. Like, bro, y'all took all the baseball teams. Everything. All the baseball teams. And they're not even color related. I thought it was like all color related. Some of them like don't even just, have nothing to do with the color. I just, didn't even know what the teams were. I just liked like the whatever team the the Stingray was, I wore that all the time because they had dope colors and they were oh, just Tampa like, Bay, uh the Tampa Bay Rays. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that's, how, that's how uninvested he was he didn't even know the team he was like i like these colors and they I was like, like you like your life he was like you're right mm -hmm. and i was a big falcons fan so i was constantly put pressed by crips bro here's <laughs> the thing my the, shirt. the falcons huh i didn't know the crips took the falcons no the the falcons is um red black red and black so i always had red and black on but the Crips, oh, got it. You were pressed. Yeah. Even the term pressed, I didn't even know what the, that, I oh, didn't know yeah. that's like, Travis actually taught me that. He was like, yeah, they press you up here. I was like, I, I, we come again? Man. And that's where they asked you like, where are you from? And so uh, I was like, bro, cause he said he got pressed just going to, when he was coming up, he was like, bro, just going to the corner store. He was like, bro, it was, he was like always getting pressed. And I was like, bro, what if you're not affiliated? He was like, bro, you better have an answer that, that makes them believe that that is true. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, back in the day, that didn't care. You know what's so crazy? Matter. Pat, remember when we uh, we interviewed D-Smoke? Was that, that was with you, right? No. Was that Doughboy that interview, uh -huh. we interviewed? Uh, it might have been Yeah, Doughboy. you talking about the Empire thing? Yeah, so me and Doughboy interviewed D-Smoke, and we were just talking uh, uh, about growing up in L.A., and he was like, you know, I was like, even coming up back then, it was bad. It was like, but it was, such, it was small things that you could do that showed that, one, you weren't affiliated, and you didn't mean harm. He's like, like literally just saying hello. Like if you do your hair like this, like, what's up? Like it's way less confrontational than doing a like, what's up? Cause just that small little wow. thing. I can, right I here, totally like, get what's that. What's cracking, right? But if you do yeah. it like this, like respect. It's almost like tipping your hat. Like exactly. Good day. That small oh little thing can change your life, bro. Ain't and I can crazy? see like Crips with the, with the, with the pull like, what's up, what's up? Like that's how you, the, yeah. the pants pull up with the walk up. What's Man. Up? It's it's subtle too. Like, well, it's it's worse. It's not as bad now because now, like, I feel like if you say you don't bang, they're way more likely to just like leave you alone. But back in the day, like, people were getting shot that weren't even affiliated. Like, even here, like on this street, when I first moved here, there was this kid who played football, and he was just walking back from the park, and they ratatad his ass, and and he was just like, I'm on some like. I don't bang and they still they still got his ass that's how it used to be what was his what what did he do was it just being outside like what was the crime just literally being outside at the wrong times like we had we didn't have race wars i remember there was a time in la where like the hispanic uh gangs were like any black people outside like we were on curfew like for real like it was like on some Dang. like go outside and then like 
the the black people would tag team with the Hispanics against the Armenians. It was a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> wow. it was, it was we had a race war at my school in in, in St. Louis, Every and it was like because uh, my high school had a lot of Bosnians there. So like uh, like Bo- like uh, Europeans, like Bosnia and Herzegovina. Yes. Okay. It was weird that to have that one race, like, but they had like a big community in, in this area of St. Louis. And bro, when I tell you, bro, they they shut the school down, locked all the doors, and they did locker searches. Bro, them dudes had brought, they had broke the chair, the legs off of chairs. They were using those. They had the the, the locks in the uh, socks. They had uh, bricks. Niggas had brought baseball bats. Bro, it was a real race war war <laughs> in high school. <laughs> I bro, remember that. Legs of chairs? Middle school. Can you imagine getting your metal chairs? chairs <laughs> Not the metal chairs, like the, uh, <laughs> the plastic chairs. And they had the metal legs. It was like the fourth, they, the legs looked like this. Yeah. Bro, they were breaking those off. And so they had like a rugged edge, like a, it was a jagged edge. Bro, it was wild. I could not imagine getting jumped with niggas who had chair legs. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> That's wild. You can't even explain your injury. <laughs> 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 hey, I, 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 there was a, like at least five or six race wars. No, no, that's that's a lot. Maybe like four or five race wars between my middle school and my high school. Participated in none of them. I did not have the blacks back, bro. When- <laughs> <laughs> like, nigga, I'm in musical theater. <laughs> bro, hey, Pat the- saw the Pat saw the fight. Uh, jumping off, he was like, and a one, and a two, and a three. <laughs> That's how many niggas were surrounding me. And a one, and a two, and a three. <laughs> Those were the Armenians. Yo! <laughs> Yo, when I was in El Paso, they had a gang war, too. And, bro, in El Paso, the, the Mexicans dominated. It was 95, maybe in my high school, it was like 98% Mexican. Oh, it was, it was, it was Taco Bell Paso. against Del Taco? Hilarious. Jesus. Hilarious. <laughs> you, I mean, you ain't going to outnumber no Mexicans in El Paso. <laughs> not, not in El Paso. That's hilarious. Somebody in the comments said, you was like, I'm going to head out. That's, that's a good joke. I don't want to encourage roasting, but that was, that was clever, Courtney Williams. I missed it. Oh, uh, no, she was talking about Pat. Never mind. I thought she was talking about me because my head is big. See, man, I'm insecure about it. Oh. <laughs> I remember when I tried to sell weed in high school, keep in mind, at this time, like, I had completely turned my life around. So I was, I'm on the honor roll. I'm a National Honor Society. I'm on the debate team, concert, and marching band, right? So I'm, like, the poster child for reform. Bro, this was 11th grade. I tried to sell weed. Everybody knows I'm the good kid now. Bro, they was like, man, get your narc ass out of here. <laughs> it took me yeah. three weeks to move seven bags of weed. Three weeks? Niggas was not fucking with me at all. How much uh, weed goes into a bag? I was, <laughs> I was just selling dime bags. I don't know what dime that bags? I, just I, was bags. Just, bro, I was just selling dime bags, bro. I, feel I like can't this believe is dime bag. bags and nickel bags even existed. That's crazy. I don't know what that means. Is that the amount of money it costs? Is that a, yeah, an so a nickel bag is $5 yeah. worth, a dime bag is $10 worth, a dub is 20 and an eighth is more about the grams. That's 3.5 grams. And then it goes up past that. But like, so How much is an eighth? An eighth is 3.5 grams. And people usually buy between that or a dub. But like back back in the day, people were buying like nickels and dimes. I remember is I bought a nickel a mu- enough for like one weed smoke? No, nickels isn't enough for like to roll up or nothing. It, nickels, it, it's enough if you roll in joints. Is it? If you roll in joints, it is. So is a joint and a blunt, is, is a blunt more weed than a joint? Yeah. Yeah. It's bigger. So is a so like um a, a joint is the, papers, the like yeah, imagine the, a joint like a cigarette uh-huh. and a blunt like a cigar. Like a black and mild. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. More the cool brown ones that. are blunts and the white ones are joints. And it's funny, like there was this drug dealer in high school and they gave me like five bags to sell for more. And I was just like, I've never done weed before. I'll try it. And it was like the worst weed ever. And I was like convincing myself I was high. And I was just like, this is dumb. I didn't touch it again. My thing is, I could, I never was, I was always a super good kid, like, to hear, but plus religion. 
But when people used to be like the the whole setup for a blunt of the whole licking of the thing is just oh, not yeah. an appetite. Not bro, sanitary. the whole I mean they were just licking it ridiculous. I'm like, yo, that's not if you want to intro somebody to weed, you gotta do the licking before you bring it to the smoke set. That's that's hella true. I feel that's like, like bro, true. another dude just <laughs> with gingivitis all on the yeah, blunt. Like, <laughs> and then like, here you go. Like what? <laughs> Put this thing out. And then they, they like burn it, right? So they gotta seal it with the lighter, right? But I'm just like, bro, you just locking in germs, bro. Exactly. Whatever it's your tongue smell like, that blunt finna smell oh, like. Oh, man. You know, put in germs with the flint. I, I know it doesn't make sense. I know they're really probably killing the germs with the fire. Yeah. But in my mind, I'm like, bro, you just locking in your spit. Now that weed gonna taste like the inside of your mouth, I'm good, man. I was, I, I, I was weed for smoke. straight edge. I didn't smoke or drink until college. And that's when I was around, started being around more white people. So white people taught me how to smoke. I was smoking in like, apples and bongs so i was just like oh this is sanitary i didn't really I get into blunts never so, understood like, how people smoke out of bongs out of apples i don't know how the weed works <laughs> it's great i was the worst weed dealer in college i dealt to white people ripped them off so much that i genuinely forgot the measurements so when i got <laughs> so when i went to all deaf and i didn't have a scale or anything I started just selling to everybody at all deaf and like talent and and um oh and, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, the when you I were... was when I was um a PA and barely just making any money, I was selling to everybody around you, by the way. You uh, were selling <laughs> weed under my nose? <laughs> yeah. Two everybody. years did you know that Pat was selling the weed? I wasn't I wasn't there yet. I was I was and it was so bad. I I, I like even Teddy and Doughboy were just like, nigga, you ripped me off. Like, <laughs> it, I was just terrible. I was giving people the wrong amount. Like, no, I didn't mean it. I just, I don't, I'm not good at fractions. <laughs> you know what made me stop? There was a, there was a dude in dormtainment <laughs> who I sold to. And for some reason, like, I was trying to figure out, because he asked for more than normal, and I was trying to just, like, eyeball it. And I was handing it to him, and I dropped it. And he picked it up, and he literally was just like, Patrick, you're not good at this. <laughs> <laughs> and I stopped. I literally stopped. The next time people hit me, I was just like, I don't sell no more. <laughs> like, that's when you put your arms on the shoulder, like, listen to me. Stop. <laughs> just stop. Sit down. Don't sell the weed smokes. <laughs> right, I was I've... so unaware of stuff that happened at ADD. People were having sex with people. Mm -hmm. doing drugs people were alcoholics and i was just like <laughs> there's a lot of hello dark my name is kevin i am happy to be here bro <laughs> people would never invite me to the parties the kickbacks oh, i didn't get invited to no i'm not tripping i was never gonna go like i was heading <laughs> home asap but there was like all kind of stuff happening you were selling whole drugs at work i was and i was texting. i tell you everything you need to know about all death that the interns made a Made extra cash selling dime bags to the talent. Yep. <laughs> and nobody thought that was weird. They're like, oh, yeah, it makes per I love this place. I, I wasn't, a, I wasn't an intern at that point. I'm not stupid. I'm not, I, I, hey, listen, I'm not working at no job if I don't get some extra perks out of it. So if his hey. extra perk was getting customers out of it, they were not I, paying, I understand. paying that much. I, I was working. like, here's the call sheet and here's the weed sheet. I've got dimes, I've got perks, I've got uh different drug i don't i don't i can't really readily name a lot of drugs i don't have a good drug history knowledge yeah, this <laughs> warrior totally freaked me out bro when i watched euphoria i was like bro is this what high school is like good grief Hold on, drug drug high euphoria okay, well, um, you like that show i love it but it, it, it freaks me out because my son's about to go to high school and i'm just like man this is hey, terrible that are they high school? I know somebody on that show, and I, she's old as hell. They're supposed to be high school. Those are full-grown adults. And sometimes, yeah. let me tell you what, this is totally unrelated. The worst movie ever at having kids that look like high schoolers <laughs> is Grease. Them people in <laughs> Grease was like 38 years old, bro. Belt, Travolta never looked like a teenager, even no! in the The Travolta. worst one was, what was her name, Rizzo? Or Liz, the, the girl, the lady who was with Danny Suko? Bruh, she was a smooth 42 years old. Like, she looks like the teacher. Stop it. <laughs> this girl is not 17. Get, you're lying to us. Not Another Teen Movie was pretty bad, too. 
Yeah, bro. Oh snap! That was that's what starring uh, Captain America. That guy went on to be Captain America. That's wild. <laughs> Chris he Evans. He sure did. Yo, y'all know who been acting for a long time? Me and my wife were talking about this the other day. Anthony Mackie, bro. Anthony Howdy? Mackie was in Eight Mile. He sure was. He was Papa Doc. He was Papa Doc. Wow. Oh Papa my Doc God. He went on to be Falcon after uh, he lost that rap battle. <laughs> this guy's real name is Clarence. <laughs> Parents lives at home with both parents, and parents' parents have a real good marriage, bro. That was, that was Anthony Mackie. Evan oh, Anthony, all the time, went home and, went and joined the Avengers. <laughs> no, remember the adjustment brule? The what? Adjustment, the what adjustment brule. <laughs> bureau? bureau. That's what I said. Bureau. You sound like you were licking a blunt and talking at the same time. Remember the adjustment brule? <laughs> it sounded like how you spell a trumpet sound. Burl. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yo, you know what? I, <laughs> he was in the Adjustment Bureau too, bro. He's been to so much stuff. So he kind of got a, like a, a fade into obscurity type of face, though. Anthony Maggie has probably, <laughs> like, realistically, probably done over. Over 15 movies outside of the Avengers franchise. Outside I, of the I gotta franchise. look up when Eight Mile came out because that was that was a minute ago. 2002 or three? 2002. Jesus. First of all, 2002 was 18 years ago. That's depressing. That wow. means if you were born in 2002, you're 18 years old now. That's ridiculous. Bro, my daughter was born in 2005. She's a freshman in high school. That's my wild. son is. Wait, in my mind, anyone sister? born in 2000 is still a little kid. That's how right? I feel about kids born in 1990. No, for real, though. They're fully... And they born. are legitimately turning 30 years old. I'm like, oh, you little eight-year-old, you want a juice box? You're born in 1990, were you? Like, I'm 30 years old this year. Bro, I, I always forget Pat is as old as he is now. Pat is having an allergic Pat, reaction I... or something. You Are you okay? You got you need some Benadryl? No, nah, it's, it's just the dog dander in here. I'm good. I'm like, bro, this dude, his eyes watering. We're like, yeah. He like, yeah. <laughs> his eyes swelling up. Like, bro, you good? No, nah, I'm good. I have allergic reactions seven times a day. I'm all right. <laughs> Does that don't sound healthy? That don't sound healthy at all, Patrick. <laughs> yeah, bro, that's my life. Life with asthma. Um, but you know what? Uh, when I have an asthma inhaler, <laughs> you know what it doesn't have on it? What's that, Pat? Wires. Look around, you guys. It is a wireless world, all right? If you're still rocking the headphones with wires on it, you, you last year already. That's it. You out of here. So now it's, it's, it's sort of like the time to be, you know, getting, catching up to the new, the new age, the new, the new year. 2020 is among us. We at home anyways. Mm -hmm. We need a good pair of wireless earbuds. But what, what do you suggest, man? Before you start, you know, dropping hundreds of dollars on a pair, you got to check out the new wireless earbuds from Raycon. Raycon? Raycon, all right? You don't say. These are actually super, super dope. All yeah, they are. Uh, <laughs> we have, we have a I'm actually pretty big fan. Um, I like them a lot. I was like, oh, these actually are really good. Yeah. yeah, because, you know, obviously, you you know, people already know that they're not only half the price of other premium wireless earbuds on the market. Mm -hmm. uh, but they, and you know, obviously they sound just as amazing. That's how they're able to do that. And you they know, work way better than the cheaper end models mm -hmm. that are on it. They're like a perfect medium for mm -hmm. the, the air, Airbud user. Mm -hmm. But they just got a newest model, the Everyday E25 earbuds. Uh, and it's their, really, it's their best ones yet. It has six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a compact design that gives you a nice noise isolating fit. I like, I really like their uh, packaging too. It looks yeah, nice. comes in the blue and the black, multiple colors. I, the thing I like most about the Raycon is that um, how they come with the multiple uh, little rubber earbud part right there. So like, yeah. like most places come, I mean, most uh, uh, packaging comes with like one or two, but this one gives you like four or five different like sizing. So you can make sure that you get the best fit for your earbud. Mm -hmm. No, for, I'm, I, I totally agree. And I think that uh, most of the times when you, whenever you're wearing earbuds, you don't really get bass like that. So the fact that they have good bass is super dope. And, you know, unlike other wireless options, 
Raycon earbuds um, are both stylish and discreet, no dangling water, uh, wires or stems. And um, it was actually, uh, the company was co-founded by Ray J. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's Ray the, is that's actually the a legit businessman. He has good businesses. He just, yeah, he, he's been killing it. The glasses, pff, he made that a meme, started selling like crazy. And the uh, scooters. He had the little scooters uh, thing, yeah, too. Doing well. So shout Ray out. getting that money, bro. Um, and, you know, all these celebrities like Snoop and Cardi B are obsessed with Raycons. Uh, so now's the time to get the latest and greatest uh, from Raycon. Get 15% off your order at buyraycon.com slash D-I-Y-S. Again, that's buyraycon, R-A-Y-C-O-N, dot com slash D-I-Y-S. And you'll get 15% off Raycon wireless earbuds. Uh, and just just use our promo code and get your, get your audio up. You feel me? Um, but real quick, I did want to ask you guys, since we are on this uh, quarantine, What's, did y'all start any like new quarantine uh, hobbies? Did you guys like finally get around to doing anything that you guys didn't really do before? Speaking to my children. <laughs> That's it? <laughs> <laughs> Talking to your kids, you're like, oh, you guys are actually pretty interesting. <laughs> no, I thought I was, I was like, cause I had bought a guitar, I had bought a bass guitar a while ago and a keyboard and I was like man I'm about to you know I'm about to get back on my musicianship uh -huh. uh, and I, I gave it to Doughboy uh I actually said I was gonna do a lot of stuff but my days be filling up with shooting content so I don't really have as much time as I thought I was like I'm gonna read a book and then I was just like no nah, I'm not I just, are you shooting like all day every day now I am I've been so what I've really been doing is shooting a lot of content with my wife to get her YouTube channel started We've been we've been shooting the most on there So those videos haven't come out yet, but we've been shooting like probably two or three videos a day nice. On her channel and then I've just been keeping up with the videos on my channel and podcast and you know We shot with all deaf yesterday. So and then you know like after you shoot for a couple hours you be tired so then I go and watch like like me and my wife started watching Tiger Tiger King on Netflix yesterday, man. Oh, that's really good. Really good? Yo, y'all, if this thing is utterly insane, I heard it's like um like somebody described it as a plane crash or train crashing and you can't look away. That is exactly what that's it how is. I talked about Honey Boo Boo. Exactly, but this bro. First of all, people be owning tigers. Like I just didn't. Think that regular people had tigers. The dude, the, the main dude, he had like 227 tigers. 200? At where? At his, he had like a freaking wildlife preservation that he built. Like, bro, it's crazy, man. Like you guys got to watch it. He wasn't even like crazy rich, but you, he ended up making a lot of money doing it. There's a lot of money in tiger cubs, <laughs> uh, playing with them, petting them and stuff. There was a lady who who was his enemy. It's wild, bro. Y'all got to check it out. Like, it, uh, this thing was. I definitely check it out. It is in me. And my wife watched three episodes last night, and then I I, I was tired after that. But it, it it's crazy, man. The dude supposedly, uh, one of the 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 main dude. It starts off like the trailers, like is a murder for hire for his his rival, who also has a tiger like reservation thing. It's crazy, <laughs> bro. Yeah, like Are he competing the first, in the tiger market. <laughs> yeah, bro. So she's like the PETA side of tigers. She's like, uh -huh. I want to help protect them. You know, she takes on like, um, what do you call it? Like rescues, people's ones from like the circus and stuff. And then the okay. other two dudes, they run like, you can come to my, my reservation and like play with the tigers, hug them, take pictures with them. So they're on the money making side of it, bro. It's crazy. It's called Tiger King on Netflix with Joe Exotic. He's gay too. He has got, he got two husbands. Um, what? Wild, man. I've actually never heard of a gay man doing polygamy. Me neither. I was, I was genuinely surprised. The craziest thing about this is we had gotten an ad for this. Sh he has a podcast now that I did months ago. And one of our people was like, yo, actually, I watched, uh, I heard about this from y'all. And I was like, us. <laughs> I didn't even know nothing about it. Netflix <laughs> really got me because we had finished watching uh, outbreak and then you know netflix now when you finish something it just goes into a trailer for something else yeah bro the trailer was so doggone eye-catching we hadn't had a chance to go to the menu yet and we were like oh so you didn't crazy. even plan on watching that no i had heard about it on twitter and people were like yo this is actually kind of crazy y'all should check this out but i i was like no, i don't know about tigers like but what i saw the trailer best things on netflix the ones that just get such good reviews that it snowballs into like just like word of mouth on twitter that, that ends up, those end up being the best specials because everything that Netflix hypes up is kind of okay. 
Yeah, I totally agree. I feel like you trust the word of your community more than what Netflix thinks you should like. Absolutely. Right. It was the same about uh, Don't Fuck With Cats. That was just like, everybody was talking about that on Twitter. And then I checked it out. I was like, yo. <laughs> was it good? I heard about it, but I never watched it. Listen, I think you should just because it, you know how like, you know how like some, some, something will happen, like um, I forget what story it was, but uh, when Tentacion died and the whole internet pl blamed that one guy and you started seeing people like doing this random research, like he was here, Three hours before. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember he that. Had a, uh, he was at this strip place, which is located, blah, blah, blah. It's literally like that in full detail. This guy just started uploading these horrible videos of him, like, vacuum sealing kittens in these packages and just, like, killing them in these crazy ways. They don't show any of that. But it got so, like, so it went viral on Facebook. And the people watching it, like, especially, like, the obsessive internet people, used all these crazy methods to hunt him down as just a tribe of people on the internet. Like the police weren't paying attention. They were calling the police, they were being ignored. But it was like down to like, okay, this is the outlet that he's in. So he must be in one of these countries. The the, the crosswalk wow. by him is only in Canada. Like they were literally like going through Google Maps, street by street. So is it a documentary or is it like a scripted series? No, 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 it's a documentary about, um, these, these, this Facebook group that uh, basically had this full investigation trying to catch this guy that led into like a national search with the police. And the police were like asking this Facebook group for like information. It's dope. It's like a four, three or four part series. Bro, uh, that's, that's yeah. just like how we were talking about with um, earlier, like how the 90s differed from the 2000s. Like, had oh. we have the technology now, that uh, then what we have now, like with phones and all of that, bro, Biggie's killer, Tupac's killer, Zodiac killer, all of them guys, bro. Like these phones make a world of a difference. All it takes is a like couple of like obsessive people. That but sometimes right. people be wrong, and 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 it causes real pain to to people they be wrong about. The dude that they, they uh, pinned XXX Tentacion, the soldier kid or whatever, he was like, they're saying he was the only one who's ever defeated Black Twitter because we were just absolutely wrong about that really yeah, and it was like a solid two weeks that everybody like were cr was crucifying him as like you know f you you killed x because you know x's fans are crazy but yeah uh, they, they yeah they they got on him and then it was just like, was that that rapper dude was he the uh, other rapper so it was like soldier kid or something like that okay and what did it come out that he wasn't even around or what like how did he prove it they 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 caught the guys who did it oh like, that's right, that's right. Okay. they have like cameras and stuff so he, <laughs> that'll do it that was just looking at Twitter, like, so it was like, just the police doing their job. Like, actually, you guys are way off. Yeah, this is brutal. <laughs> yeah that's why they are, don't always listen to people on the internet. But this don't fuck with cats. Those are the people they should have listened to. It's pretty dope, though. That's so, craziness. So here, what's the one thing you picked up on the quarantine? Did you pick weight. up any hobbies? <laughs> I have picked up weight. I, listen, we were outside of the back door. This push up, I'm not pushing up this workout thing. We saw on um, I saw on uh, Facebook. It basically has like a workout for every letter of the alphabet, and you have to spell out your first name and do that, Easy. bruh. It the first name was like ten burpees out the gate, and then the last letter of Farron's name, it was another twenty five. I was like, oh, get out of here. Uh, we gonna change the last uh, twenty five to mountain climbers. So did you spell, uh, did you spell to here or Bob Bob? <laughs> I don't. I don't think Squadcast will have come out by the time this is. But uh, there is a very interesting episode of Squadcast. Oh, that was yesterday. We did that on quarantine. Yeah. Oh. Oh. So that's out. It's out. Oh. Okay. Well, go check out our quarantine games. To hear made an amazing. Um. What is this? An announcement. An announcement that he his nickname used to be Bob Bob. Um, hey, 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 Pat, you my, you my nigga, bro. I love you. I'll fight for you, but I always, I also beat your ass, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing I hear is, Bob, 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 Bob. Crazy. Yo, the way to hear said that, I will absolutely believe. Hey, man, listen, I love you, but if I will say it you. like that. We, we are pretty serious. <laughs> 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 and Tahir has stabbed somebody too. So I'll, 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 I'll has watch stabbed that. a man. It was man. a man, right? No, at that time it was it was a. I mean, he was a teenager my age at the time. We oh, were 
I you were stabbing as a teen? Bro, I was, listen, being light-skinned with freckles, playing tennis, and having a mom that wouldn't, like, let you do anything, bro, like, I had to, I was acting out. All my uncles and cousins was about that life, so I couldn't be the only one not about that life. And I was light-skinned. I had to be the most about that life. I was the one want to beat you up because you was playing tennis. They just saw you walking by like, oh, 40 love, nigga, I'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I was playing tennis and when, like I I used to ride through the hood on rollerblades. I had, I was uh, catching, I mean, come on for here. I, I was mean, catching the bus like, with my tennis sacks. I'm on a public bus, not the yellow bus, like the public bus with my tennis <laughs> sacks. I got my tennis racket in my backpack. I just look like a target. And so because of that, I had to overcompensate. It's like all my cousins, all my uncles and cousins, all them niggas was GDs. Everybody in my family could fight. So it's like if you can't fight, you better be able to aim. So, like, when we did drive-bys, I was the first one hanging out the window. Yo, first you participated in a drive-by? Oh, at least. Don't incriminate yourself out here. I <laughs> thought you just participated in drive throughs mostly. <laughs> That's what he's talking about. He was hanging out the window. <laughs> hey, hey, let me, let me get, get a number one. one. Let me get the number one. I want no onions, no pickles, <laughs> heavy tomato, heavy uh, mayo. To hear being able to fight stabbing people, all that makes so much sense now. Because he was rollerblading through the hood with a saxophone and a tennis racket. Like, no wonder you can fight. <laughs> no wonder. Oh, I'm not going to lie. Like, I didn't catch a number of fades. You understand me? A number a of fades. so big, too, man. You didn't have an alto or a soprano. That's a big case. Bro, it's a big case. It's just a little bit smaller than a... Um, well, in length, it's shorter Been than uh, baseball on that. But bro, I when I tell playing you, tenor sax because of how big it is. I saw bro, it big, tiny, bro. Tiny instruments, living the best life. I was like, forget this, bro. <laughs> it was, it was not like because when niggas they would catch me while my hands was full. I got a big backpack on, tennis <laughs> racket hanging out the back, and I got this tenor sax, bro. Like. They catch me like, hey, what's up now, nigga? And I'm like, fuck. I try to drop everything. And get the, like, niggas, niggas was shady. They catch me taking a book back right. You can't, I can't do nothing mid this. Yeah. You Bro. can't, you can't fight with a backpack on. It's, it's, uh, your, your, your equilibrium is off. Has anyone ever dropped a saxophone and then whooped a nigga's ass, though? <laughs> Hold this, nigga. Big, 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 big. <laughs> to hear you Let did that. You. I had to stand my ground because there's no way you can run with a sax. And if I would have lost it, I would have had to pay for it. Bro. Uh, you cannot you cannot cut through an alley carrying a dinner sax. <laughs> it's, like, it's like you're running for a plane. Listen to me. I would stop gangbanging if a nigga whooped my ass, picked his tenor sax back up, and got on the bus. He's like, I'll take my tennis racket. <laughs> it's like, I'm out the game. I'm oh, out. I he skated away. He's like, oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> Only did the rollerblades in the summer. Only did the roller smooth, smooth skated out of the, off into the horizon where you got a, you, and your eye is throbbing and this is all you see. <laughs> where you, no, you see the back of him. You see this. Imagine he skates away backwards like they do in, a, in ATL. Just like. <laughs> I got to keep my eye on those on skating backwards. Like, oh, I see you, son of a bitch. <laughs> Oh my god, <laughs> bro! Man, you can't hey. run with that, bro. You ain't never hit nobody with the tenor sax case just to set it off, bro. You can't swing that, bro. You really can't. It's literally it's like luggage, hilarious. bro. Like, like, dude. I'm telling. I remember the, the first time I got socked out by somebody bigger than me, and I couldn't do nothing about it. I was in middle school. I went to go pick up my little sister in elementary school. Got off the bus, and these older cats. They had to be like high school. Walked up. Was like, yo. You told such and such, we was pressing y'all, or we was messing with y'all. I was like, I don't even know what you talk. I don't know who such and such is. It's like, yes, you do it. And the other dude like, no, that one him. He don't even he don't even talk to nobody. And it was like, okay, all right, cool. And I, I, I could have let it go. But I, I was like, see, man, that's what I'm going to tell my cousin, man, because niggas be talking too much shit. Dude turned around. He was like, what you say, little nigga? <laughs> Let me get to you before you tell your cousins. <laughs> it was literally like a movie. Like, he was walking away. He was like, what you say, little nigga? Bro, he was like, who's your cousin? I was like, you don't know him. He an older. He a GD. You don't like, know well, I'm a crip. And then, <laughs> his homie's like, man, leave little nigga alone. It was just like a boys in the hood. He's like, leave little nigga alone. He's like, you right. <laughs> oh, snap. 
the phone because yeah. I feel like they were alone. You punched him. We said, leave him alone. Right. That sucks because after he said, you right, you were probably like, oh, thank God. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> my, only, my only thought. That was the opposite it, of leaving me alone. <laughs> in, in, in that moment, my only thought was, don't fall, they're going to stump you, right? So I had to take it. He, he, he wound up like a major league baseball pitcher. He came back with one of these. Like, it was a three stooges punch. Bow, right down. I was like. If they stomped you out too after saying leave them alone, like who are these friends? And leave I was them alone. Bro, I was obviously a middle school student. <laughs> obviously a middle school student. He was they in high school. like the threat, the the potential of a threat. They was like, bro, bro it, when you guy. live in that lifestyle, like, did y'all watch The Wire? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Remember when they they tried to the, the 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 season of the school when they tried to study the the high school kids and they were already hardened criminals. They're like, oh, you got to start with. Middle school. I mean, you. We gotta start with sixth graders. Yeah. That time, kid, seventeen. He been it's in jail over. three times already. You're already Michael B. Jordan at that time. You're already Michael B. Jordan. That's what to he hear was, was like when you the Michael B. Jordan. Great. <laughs> he college that string. That's crazy. When you live that hood lifestyle, bro, age and all that. None of that. That the regular rules of stuff does not apply. I like how that nigga still asked who your cousin was, though, before. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, what'd you say? Wait, 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 who's your cousin? Because he got to know. Listen, who, that, answer can determine, that answer could determine his next move. It's somebody exactly. that he should be reckoned with. Like, oh, oh like, all right, I'm going to stall him out. Like, Big Mookie. Rules. Big Mookie. All right. Like, I don't know that's, when I got kidnapped, it was because niggas knew who my uncle was. And they knew how much dope he was moving in the hood. And so yeah, that yeah. was the whole reason. And that's why they tried to set me up. And you got what now? When you got kidnapped. Oh, when you got kidnapped. So you were the weak link? They are like, that one. <laughs> I, was the, I was the most easily accessible one because I was still catching the bus at the time. Oh, how I you? Get him catching the bus yeah, and the tenor racket. No, I was, I was 13 when they called me. God damn, what, they put the pillowcase over your head? Nah, they just, like, literally, I'm getting off the bus. Niggas just w- walked up, grabbed me, and dragged me to this abandoned house. The fact that you didn't realize huh? that he was kidnapped is the worst, weirdest part about that story. You say what? what? When you were on JK News, you were like, no, I wasn't kidnapped. They just took me and then said, I can't leave. They were like, so you were kidnapped? He was like, no, oh, yeah, I guess I was. Oh, you didn't know that until recently? What'd you, what'd you think? I just think some niggas had called me slipping. Because I, when I, you say kidnapping, I'm thinking like, I'm th- I always think like a kid, like six, seven, eight year old. I didn't you realize the like, band, the, the hood over you, you know. I think the- all of that. You know what I'm saying? I just like, oh, niggas called me lacking. Like, they, they, they got me. Yeah, niggas got Did they me beat you up? Me. Huh? Did they beat you up? No, they tied me up and set me on fire because I didn't have the information they wanted. Hold, hold. Set you on fire? You got set on fire? I told you this. We talked about this on your show. They oh, were asking about, they were asking about the location of the dope houses, but I literally did not know where the dope houses were. Okay, let's just, okay, at this point, can you just tell the story? Because <laughs> this keeps getting remember. better. Me and Dope Boy were laughing a lot. That The fire part slipped by. Wow. So okay. Me, Let's run it back from the beginning of the day. What'd you have for breakfast? <laughs> I don't know. Cereal. Okay. They now I'm getting off the bus. Took me to the abandoned house. No, no, no. Don't chair. I mean, it was a couple. It was a couple punches thrown. They definitely threw a couple punches, like to get me in the chair. Tied Where was the bus, bus driver? He was just like, "All right, this is your stop, bro. Help me out." No, it wasn't that type of bus. It was a public bus. It's like Metro. <laughs> once okay, you're, off, once you're, off the bus, you're no longer the bus driver's responsibility actually what if you're something that happened on the bus he's not responsible to stop anything he just has to call it in did he and call it? that in that city you probably don't want no problems bro nah especially yeah. if that's your route that's probably your route for the whole week you call something in or you try to help out they catch you the next day Hell, so, how, so how uh how did you got off the bus and what happened they called me took it to the abandoned house you keep passing the parts that I want to hear. <laughs> so they called me getting off the bus. Were they waiting rally. for you? Like they knew, you, they expected you to get off at this stop? I did it every day. Same <clears> up <throat> every day. Rosemount, every day. You so they came up to you and just grabbed you or they punched you? No, they grabbed me. There was three of them, grabbed me. Off your feet or you were just going down the street like this? <laughs> no, nah, they like grabbed my, <laughs> grabbed my arms. Two of them like on my sides, grabbed my arms and like dragging me. The other one kind of like looking out. He's leading the way. Take me to an abandoned house, like up the street, right? So I'm like, yo, get the fuck off of me. I'm trying to do all of this thing. No but one saw time, huh? No one saw? It's, bro, it's East St. Louis. It Paris just looked like a fight. Your kids up like that. <laughs> it just looked like a fight. Okay. And they were, they were grown men, though. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, probably late teens, early 20s. Oh, shit. Okay. Take me to the house. 
punch me come ties, and I'm tied to the chair. They tie me like one of the ropes that like girls jump rope with, like the the, the ropes that you would put on. They tied you up with double touch? Huh? Yes. They tied you up with a jump rope? Mm-hmm. Like that rope. Like it literally looked like they took it from somebody's little sister or one of their little sisters, something like that. This seems like a little kid crime. Okay. And there was just abandoned houses everywhere. At this part of East St. Louis, 37 to Caseyville. Like, yeah, bro. It's like, it's, it, was a, it was an old candy store, right? Like one block away from the bus stop where the bus stop was. Uh, and I think 36th Street is where they took me down. No, 35th Street is where they took me down. And it was a, it was a, like, a little spot right behind that, that candy store. So they took me in there. It was a chair. They already had to set up, had the chair, tied me to the chair, punched me, hit me, asked me for the, uh, the, the location. Like, they just needed to know what street it was on. They was going to find the house. Like, bro, I don't know nothing. Like, I go to school. That's Y'all know me. I, I ride the bus every day. I go to school. This nigga know, bro. Threw the kerosene on him. Couldn't tell him anything else. Kerosene? They had kerosene, but they didn't have a rope to tie you up? <laughs> kerosene, they, they shouldn't have the kerosene. Like, nobody using kerosene uh, heaters anymore. That lets you know how how impoverished this neighborhood was. They were still, like, using kerosene heaters. Kerosene is an old-school flammable liquid. Yeah. Grab the kerosene. Yeah, who organized this? This was a terrible crime. So, wait, how much did they pour on you? This is enough, like, douse me. It, it mainly got on my pants. It mainly wow. got on my legs. But they doused you like, like this. It wasn't over me like this. It was like this. So tell me they didn't do the whole like. Shh. Nah, they didn't. It wasn't that dramatic. But they just do it. They just lit it. A match or what? Lighter. And you got on fire. Legs caught on fire. Pants caught on fire. But the rope was. That's what mo most of the rope was. So like, once the rope caught on fire first, I was able to like kick free. Kick free, the chair broke a little bit, and I was able to get away. Because the, the rest of the rope was, like, on, like, Were they watching, or did they leave? They dipped. They ran. As soon as the fire started, and I started screaming, they dipped. So Why you told the truth. Because if you didn't, they would have called you liar, liar, pants on fire. Okay. All right. I'm okay. I'm sorry. I, I, I know you want me to be better than this to hear, but you expect more from me than I expect from myself. Why do, why do villains always leave before the job is done? They're always just like, all right, Batman's in there. Let's That's go to probably the next. like, they probably, bro, you probably think about having to do this, but then when you really do it, they're probably like, oh, snap. I, this, bro, oh, this yeah, is I don't want to watch this. It was so surreal. And then it's like, once I'm screaming, it's just drawing attention to them and the location. Right. So it's just like, let's get out of here. He ain't gonna make so, it. Do you think they doused enough on you? Like, do you think they were trying to burn you to death? or? Absolutely. Do you I, I absolutely believe that was the guy because his, everybody knew my uncle. So it's like, if I live, I'm going to tell him. If yeah. I tell him, he's going to find you. Right. So they poured enough to kill you, but it was just on your pants? No, it got more, but that's what, that's what caught on fire first. Did you get, do you have any lasting burns from this? Yeah, the back of my legs, like the calf part still doesn't like, it doesn't grow hair right there. Like where I have my tattoo, the arch at. Th those parts didn't, didn't, didn't. Is that part of the reason why you got those tattoos? No. Is that wait? So you weren't really burnt like that? Like how did how did you you said the the rope caught on fire? Mm hmm. Well, the rope the rope was on the on the legs, and it was like behind my wrist, right? So legs caught on fire first. The rope where the where the fire like was the strongest at or the most lit was right around where the rope was. So I was able to like kick free and then the chair was just like a wooden chair and it was old. I guess they probably found it in the, in the, uh, the house and then like they brought it with them. So when they was able to, that caught on fire and the rope was able to catch a little fire. So it didn't like burn all the way off. When the chair broke, I was able to like, you know, you kick your legs or you take your pants off like that. I was able to get loose from there. Did you break the chair? No, nah, it, was, it was just, I ain't that strong. I, mean, I was still tied up. I was just moving around. And the leg, one of the legs with the right, right, right leg was loose. A week. And so you kicked out and then put the fire out, or was the fire mm -hmm. already out? Nigga, I stopped dropping roll. That's, and you didn't have any permanent burns? Not permanent, no, no. I mean, I was burnt up. It wasn't like third degree. I didn't have to go get a skin graft or nothing like that. Really? Like Andy or him for a little bit. Wow. That's, that, I mean, shit, you're pretty lucky. You're lucky they also didn't do no butt stuff. You were kidnapped and put in an abandoned building. I'm glad I'm not the only one, man. I just, I, I, 
I had to let, I couldn't let the joke go. Pat said, you're lucky they didn't do no butt stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great Yo, to hear, like, in all seriousness, all seriousness. That's insanity. You have lived a life. Nigga, that is Narcos. You should thank the Lord you are alive. This is just one of your things. This isn't even all. And I thought we all knew about the whole story. We did not. <laughs> I don't feel like you went into this detail on Righteous and Ratchet. The fire yeah. is a big Y'all, y'all kept cutting story. me off on Righteous and Ratchet. I know. We were terrible on that day. We were terrible on that day. Hold on. Um, Rachel Sutherland and Courtney Williams is East St. Louis, Illinois. East St. Louis is in Illinois. St. Louis is in Missouri. So East it's East Saint. of St. Louis. So it's East St. Louis. That's where it, this is where it happened. Just so y'all know. That is insanity. I remember one time um, I had a similar story. I kind of like got some kerosene on my pants once and I lit, um, I like lit uh, the stove or something and it like, it, it like caught up my pants on fire and I had to take my pants off and it turns out that my, uh, my pubes got singed. So I had to, I had to do some manscaping and, um, it's kind of crazy because Manscaped just redesigned the electric trimmer and uh, Manscaped engineering team spent 18 months perfecting the greatest ball hair trimmer ever created. And that is the new and improved Lawn Mower 3.0. Now, wait, 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 Pat, wait a second. I heard that this is a third generation trimmer and it features it is. a cutting edge ceramic blade to prevent manscaping accidents. Is that true? It is true. It is true. This helped me through my whole or deal wow. so uh manscape accidents all of that is finally a thing of the past i'm telling no nicks no no cuts none of that they 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 perfected this this is premium the battery mm-hmm. lasts up to 90 minutes so you could take a longer shave too one of the coolest things i like about the pack is the led light which illuminates grooming areas for a closer and more precise trimming that i thought was dark. pretty cool just in case you want to do it in the dark, they got. I just shaved my balls with that this morning, and boy, let me tell you, they are smooth. Eggshells, okay. my nigga. Eggshells. Mm-hmm. They've also upgraded to a seven thousand RPM motor with Quiet Stroke technology. That's I love the Quiet Stroke. Uh, let's not forget about the charging stand. Uh, show your mower off loud and proud because this intelligently designed stand is a rapid charging dock powered by USB. Now, uh, now listen, we ha- we had to get those those talking points out verbatim how they wanted us to. Now I can give you my true opinion of this. I absolutely adore the Line More 3.0. I'm gonna tell you what, I said I've said this every podcast we talk about it. We were supposed to get the, the 3.0 like last year. And they had they got our email address and our and our addresses. They were like, hey, we're gonna send it to you. And then we got an email like, hey, they want to go back to work on it. They were not like satisfied with the work they had done and mm-hmm. went back into the 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 uh, Switch back that release date. Boy, something fierce. So now I I love this Lime War 3.0. I am not gonna hold you. It's 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 the best out right now. So uh we got you on it. You can get 20% off of your order plus free shipping with the code DIYS at manscaped.com. Once one more time that is 20% off and free shipping with the code D-I-Y-S, like damn internet, you scary, at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. Mm-hmm. All right. Gooch too. All right, so kidnapped. <laughs> this, is, this is probably one of the craziest personal stories that I've ever heard in my entire life. Do you ever like think about that day or are you kind of like over it? Uh, at this point, I'm kind of over it, bro. Like, it's kind of one of those things, like, like you growing up in L.A., so you become kind of numb to the violence and mm-hmm. the shit that you hear about what's going on in your neighborhood. And for me, it was like, it was the same thing. Like, I just I just thought that was, like, regular living. Like, it wasn't until I started hanging around. Huh? You thought that was regular? I, I just, Literally, I just thought, like, it's the same way somebody, like, it was an attempt on my life. So the same way someone would get shot or get stabbed at a club or something like that, it was just, I just chalked it up as, to the game as that. Like, it was part of that environment. It's part of that ecosystem that I grew up in. So I didn't, like, think that it was nothing weird in comparison to other people who I were, was around. It wasn't until I, like, started going to college and I realized, and, and I got to the working world, that I realized, like, yo, this, 
this wasn't normal. So here is right, bro. Normal is relative to your life. And if that's like every, whatever your life is, if everybody does that, you mm -hmm. think that's normal. Like when I grew up in church, like this is obviously very different from Tahir's life, but everybody I knew spent five, six days a week in church, in church Sunday night, all, all day Sunday, all we do is church. Like I didn't, you never questioned that because nobody, like even the way we got beat, like everybody got beat like that. All mm -hmm. of our friends got beat. Our friends' parents beat us. People who well, didn't get like go online and be like, "This is wrong." I'm telling. I'm telling on my mom. Yeah, mind. nobody. You, your whole community did that. So that's like even like with sister wives, Mormon people, cults, all that stuff. If that's your everyday life, you don't know no different. That's like the wire. Remember the wire, like bro. If you grow up in that game, like uh, Avon's nephew, D'Angelo, mm -hmm. he didn't have no choice. You go. You we sell drugs, bro. That's what we do. Anything. Anything well, that also explains that is, why he, is unusual. That also explains why Tahir didn't really uh, realize he was kidnapped until recently, because he was probably just like, "Yeah, I mean, it was just like some regular and shit." Tahir oh, found that kidnapped. in his mind as I just got caught slipping. Literally, that's same, when I got shot. That tells you everything thing. you need to know about how he grew up. He For got real. kidnapped, beat up, set on fire, and his mind said, "Ah, oh, they caught me slipping." Like, caught what, me were, what were you supposed to do? Ride the bus to another stop? You, you were, you were victimized. That is it's, the craziest part is that those guys really wanted your uncle to find a 13, his 13 year old nephew burned to death in an abandoned building. Like, Jesus Christ, like, what? That's I, I never even went that far with a thought. It was like, it was just tail on. And you take sure care. He was upset. <laughs> hey, you don't got to talk about that, but I'm sure he was. Nah, I was I was one of the favorite plenty. nephews, so yeah, that, you know, plenty pissed. So I mean, you, was this a was this a weekday to here? Yeah, I was coming from school. So the next day, did you just go to school? Yeah, nigga, I had perfect attendance. Did you uh, did you get off on a different stop? Like, what was the? No, no. You were just like, well, it's Thursday now. <laughs> now my own, I mean, <laughs> after that, after that. After that, my uncles and my cousins, they made sure I, like, they, they were at the bus stops waiting on me to make sure, like, oh, nothing okay. went crazy like that. Okay. Like, my mom was more freaked out. I, I didn't even, I didn't tell my mom that night. I didn't tell my mom until a couple weeks later because I know she would have, like, freaked out. So, mm -hmm. it was a weird situation, man, because, like, my mom always made more money to, like, live somewhere else, but she had a gambling problem. So... Most of our funds went to that. So, like, we didn't want to be at my grandmother's house, but it was kind of like that's what our options was at that point. And mm -hmm. I know she felt some type of way about it, so I just didn't put that, that extra drama on it. So I just, I just told my uncles. And my cousins and my uncles would be up at the bus stop waiting on me when I got off. for like Your mom didn't week. know? Huh? She didn't know until a couple weeks later. She didn't know until after my, my uncle. Dang. Well, I, I guess that's for the best. Uh, we, that we, is pretty we, crazy. Huh? We were living very different lives. Bam. Clearly. That, I was doing all this on Grand Theft Auto at the time. <laughs> Tahir was just living Liberty City, clearly. <laughs> Tahir, I'm going to tell you what, what makes it not seem real. And I apologize for how we laughed at you on Rikes and Ratchet. You talk about this so nonchalantly, it doesn't seem real. You talk about it like the way Pat would say, oh, yeah, man, I went to band practice, and then, you know, I tripped. Well, for me, I that's what to... makes it seem real. That's what I'm I was saying. Like, yo, seems... There's this crazy story, yo. I got jacked, and then he, they lit me on fire. Yeah. And it was all theatrics. It was just be me trying to be cool. <laughs> you know what's even crazy? So uh, I had the kid when I was 14. Hey, come here. So here's, here's the craziest thing. This is this how crazy life is. So the, the chick's name was coincidentally, Pat, you said it earlier, Liberty. Her name was Liberty Bell. Like that was her real name. She actually went to school with my wife. What? Yeah. You want to get in front of the camera? <laughs> no. <laughs> she turned, you turned the camera and everything? Like, she yeah, she yeah. naked working. She don't want to get in front of the camera. <laughs> oh, no. oh, why were you trying to put her on? Like, she's, not, she's not naked. She got on oh. work. Baron is funny, by the way. She, huh? Baron is funny. Kevin said you're funny, man. I like Farron a lot. Uh, yeah, they were friends. She remembers me coming up to, my, to her school because I would, I would go up there to go meet Liberty, to walk to her house, to go pick up my son. 
to catch a bus. I had to catch three buses to get back home to have my son. This is what I was doing like on the weekdays. So I would leave school early to go up to her school to go get him to catch three, three buses, go back home so I could have him for five, six hours. Then I had to catch those same three buses back up to her crib, catch the same three buses back home, Damn. and then get up for school literally like three hours later. That's insanity. You, you, that's how much you slept, three hours? I mean, when I, when I would go get him through the week, yeah. Jeez. When I wasn't working, because I, I, I would get him when I didn't work at the junkyard, because I was too young to work like a regular job. So, I, like, on Mondays and Thursdays, I would work at a junkyard picking up cans, stripping corns of aluminum, breaking down carburetors for, uh, I mean, alternators for uh, copper. Anything I could do to make some, like, pick up the money and make, like, $20, $35 a day in, like, three, four hours. And that was the money that I would use to pay for his daycare or shoes or clothes or wipes or diapers and stuff like that. And then on other days, I would go get him at the school. And you were 14 at this time? Mm -hmm. God damn it. Bro, my son about to be 14 in like six months. When I tell what you this man would not be ready to do, that, that's eighth grade. Eighth grade going into ninth grade. I'd die. <laughs> that's when he was born. He's born, I was in ninth grade. Man, I would, die. I would literally die, and the, and I think any kid I would have would die too. I, I'm just not responsible like that. Jesus, that's a lot, man. I had a, I had my first kid at 23, and I was like, man, still what freaking the out. Heck, are you supposed to be doing? And this is insane. And you was at, you was figuring it out at 14, man. Before that, a decade before that, bro. Bro. Her dad tried to give, I remember when her dad tried to give me some dope to sell so I would make money for him. For, for well, for him and for the baby. Right. Yeah. Have you forgiven that woman? I like to tell myself yes, but I know that's a, that's a, that's a lot of reasons for a lot of pent up aggression and distancing. Like even with, with Farron and like, when I, cause I moved out, I moved out when I was 14. So shortly after everything happened, I moved out. And because of that, my mom was in a very abusive relationship. So she wasn't the most comforting. So that's why like, I didn't get a lot of hugs and affection growing up. So, and I, I wasn't a great communicator either. Cause like, I just, I wouldn't talk to keep from getting upset or like show a weakness. So when, Farron and Kendall moved out here. Like, I didn't know how to be affectionate. I didn't know how to be a, a partner. I didn't know how to be a father, like, to a daughter. Like, my son, I was a little, you know, I was hard on, but he was boy, so I'm just, like, you know, making him tough. Uh, but with my daughter, like, I didn't, I didn't experience, like, a genuine hug, like a love-filled hug until probably I was, I was, I was married. And I didn't know how to accept it because anytime I hugged a female, it was literally just to get started with something physical, right? Mm -hmm. So like just a love filled hug, like intimacy to me only meant sex. It wasn't until I got with Farron that I learned that intimacy is a practice of being with someone that you truly adore, someone that you have genuine love for and those feelings. And it doesn't have to be physical at all. It can literally just be the exchange of energy and the presence of each other. So all of that, I learned from her and my daughter, because my daughter would run up and hug me, like hug me around my waist, just at the end of the school day or something, and it would make my skin crawl. Like I would cringe, because I did not know it. It was so foreign to me, wow. it felt uncomfortable. What and it wasn't until then that I learned how to accept that. And I'm still not great at it. Like when y'all try to do it, it still freaks me out. But like, I can do it with them, but like most people, Physical touch really. I noticed together. when you go to hug to you know the dap up and the and the, the all around hug we we do. To here is a is a there's two types of black dap up. There's the full grab me in and there's the forearm shiver. To here is a, a he'll keep you at the distance, so your your dap up comes. You know what I'm talking about? He'll, yeah, he'll come here. He don't let you go. And I I'm a I'm an emotional. I mean uh I'm a physical touch. I hug my friends. I hug Doe. And I be holding to here, it'd be like, I'd be forgetting, like, well, one, you never really said that. You just be I like, I didn't know that at all, yeah. You just kind of be like, hey, all right. You'd be like, get it off quick. Oh, like, hey, to here. Cause he, you know, he parked my, his car at my house sometimes when he, when he, you know, like when he went skydiving or something like that. And I'd be like, like to here, my friend, I'll be seeing him through the window. I'd be like, hey, man, give me a hug. He'd be like, ah, man, I'm finna go shoot. 
Man, give me a hug. Like, all right, skirt. Like he be pulling off with the quickness. Man. <laughs> he just kind of walks away, and I never. You didn't. You just mi- introduced the hug thing like a week or so ago, maybe. Yeah, I you know, I, don't, I never talked about like all of this is uh <clears throat> It's uh, difficult for me to talk about because I never wanted to. Uh, it's all good. Take your time, man. <clears throat> I never want to be vulnerable. Cause I feel like people, you feel like people use it as a weakness on you. If you show, you show emotion. I'd be like that too. Honestly to hear that almost cost me my marriage. Like it, it, it was, it, we weren't talking about divorce, but we, we had to, we had to have some serious conversations. She was like, you can't be like this. I need, I need you to open up to me. And it's, it's hard when you, when you are not used to that. How'd you get over it, Kev? I feel like for me, feeling like, so me and Melissa have been together for 20 years, married for 15 and realizing that, cause for me it was like, I wasn't the same as to hear, but I could not share Anything that made me feel weak or scared, I could not share that with her. I was just like, like the tour, house, anything where I felt like if I look like I don't know what I'm doing as a man in the house, I don't got it going on. I cannot share that with you. And she was like, nah, I need to know when you're scared. And I'm like, I'm like, you got to understand, like, I don't even acknowledge to myself when I'm scared. Because if I acknowledge to myself that I'm scared, then that somehow makes it real. So you're asking me to to share my fears with you when I don't share my fears with myself? And she was like, we can't, because what happened is we were traveling so much and she wasn't going to come the next time. She was like, we can't continue on as if we see each other every day and we don't. I need more of you because we have limited amount of time. And the thing is, with Tahir, like, I get it. I, see, I'm actually glad we're separated because I would hug you now and then I know that'd be like a whole thing. But you get used to living your life in a certain way and you don't know no other way. Like, even if you don't want to be that, the, the, the way you are, you don't know. Like, what do you, how do, why do I just be smiling or risking you leaving me, risking you using it on me? Like, that's another thing, especially for black men. We can't show weakness in any part of our life. Yeah. And if you let a woman in, right, let her know you love her and care about her and you would miss her, then she can now use that against you. And we'd be like, nah, you ain't finna have nothing on me. Nah, you good. I mean, we can smash, but if you go, you go. If you don't, you don't. I mean, if you want to be here, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's how we do stuff because it's not, it's not socially acceptable or it didn't feel like it was socially acceptable to be like, no, I love you. I miss you. I want you around. Like that didn't seem like a thing that men said. No men in my life, were ever seen being like, I love you, I miss you, I want you to be around. It's like, nah, you out here, you smash these women, and you be doing stuff that ain't even like your personality. Like when I was young, and I was just trying to copy my brothers and them. Like, I don't really like to treat women like this, but this is what everybody around you does, so right. you don't feel cool. But when I met Melissa, I was really like, bro, I'm cool. Y'all could do all that stuff. That never really was me anyway. I was just trying to impress my friends and stuff. But low key, I'm cool with this. You know what I'm saying? But Somebody's got to make you feel safe enough to do that, and then you got to feel safe enough in yourself to be vulnerable like that. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I, she's, she's definitely like the first person to ever make me feel like that safe. And it was, um, it was definitely the vulnerability of it, but I cut off a lot of emotions I know when I moved out because I know I was young and I didn't want to be looked at as naive. And I thought I was grown because I had a kid and I moved out. So I was like, fuck it. You know, like I never really let people in. I put up like a wall, then I put up another wall. So like, well, my, my best friend cried, my died in my house. He got killed in my house from one of my uncle's other friends. And I didn't cry at that funeral. 
I didn't cry at my, my grandmother's funeral. I didn't cry at my, my grandfather's funeral. I didn't cry at my sister's, uh, her father's funeral. And then most recently, my, my mom's basically boyfriend who was her boyfriend for like damn near 20 years who was like my stepdad. I didn't cry at his funeral because still, I'm still breaking down residual layers yeah. and all of these walls and these barriers. And I don't, I never used to talk about this a lot like not so much because of the emotional ties to it, but I didn't want to be recognized for that. I didn't want like my first time on a talk show to be like, you know, if I do write a book, they'd be like, oh my God, your book is so crazy. How did you overcome these crazy obstacles? I wanted to be recognized for my talent and I didn't want people's sympathy or empathy. I wanted, you know, their approval of, of praise for my talent. Cause I didn't want to be a sympathy, so I don't. I don't want nobody sympathy. Like I don't. I don't, you know what I mean. I don't never have no problem working. I'll work until my dying day. Like I know I'm gonna die at eight o'clock. I'm gonna be at work at six a.m. and I'll get off at two, so I can get everything together, so I can go ahead and die peacefully. Like I never wanted anybody to hand me anything. I've always wanted to work for it, so now I feel like I don't owe anybody anything. Like right. I had to call Kev, I think last year, and borrow two hundred dollars. And it was one of the hardest calls for me to make. And I knew that he was my friend. And I knew that, you know, he would never hold it over my head. But just being that vulnerable to have to ask somebody for something. Even though me and Kevin have toured the entire world together. Right. I've been to his house. He's met my entire family. It still was that level of vulnerability and that's that feeling of uncomfortable of somebody potentially holding it over my head. And just all of those past fears come to the forefront Right. that made it so difficult to do yeah. and yeah man it's, it's just hard bro like i just and the part of it is people sometimes people confirm the worst in them which makes you feel justified for how you why you are the way you are wait say that again so like so this isn't what happened with me and Tahir, but say i let Tahir borrow that 200 dollars, right and then six months down the line I'm like, like if we in a group, we roasting. And I'm like, well, nigga, you, you was broken out to give you 200. Like, right then, then it's like, oh, see? Yeah. You were supposed to be, right. okay, you want to, that was for, that was like some vulnerable stuff. And you use that against me. Like, right. when people do stuff like that, it'd be like, yeah. this is exactly why I don't never do nothing bad. I'll never do that again. I'll Love die. I'll, I'll sell drugs. I'll rock. Before I ever put you in a position to, to be able to do that to me, right. I'll never do any. And the thing is, that could have happened to Tahir 15 years times. ago. Right. Somebody could have did that to him 15 years ago. But now everybody who he interacts with could potentially do him like that. And you won't put yourself in a position to ever have anybody do you yeah. like that. That's why I'm working. If women, that's what this is what I want to say too. I'm sorry to hear, and I know y'all get on me for this, and I'm gonna try to be better, but not right now. You've been doing actually really a great job and not interrupting this whole show. I'm, I'm working on it. I we're all human. I be talking yeah. too much. Um a lot of times women don't realize that they are the reason that we be like this because they throw our feelings in our face. Women in previous relationships, you open up and then they try to punk you, call you weak or something like that. That could have happened 10, 10 years ago, three relationships ago. This current woman you're dealing with is, is dealing with your reaction to a girl never, three relationships never ago. Never again, yeah. You never, and she might just have been a terrible person or whatever, but now you're like, oh, no. Because remember Sharonda? I told her that. I told her, like, my, you know, my real dad wasn't part of my life, and that's how that made me feel. And she's like, that's why you be crying when your little dad ain't around. You be like, bet. Zoop. Nobody right. will ever even know how I feel about that. Right. I will never do. I will never talk that. You'll never have an opportunity to use that. No one, not that's you, natural. not any woman ever. That's completely. Oh, a couple things, really quickly. Like that's why when when, when the tour got postponed, bro, I freaked out because I'm like, I don't know how I'm gonna take care of my family this time. So I've been, yeah, I've been like really pushing the new show so hard to try to grow my fan base, and I would normally have the shirts coming in, but because I'm looking for a new vendor. I don't even have the shirt income coming in. So, like, the ADD thing was a godsend. But I know it's all going to work out. Like, based on my past and what he's brought me through, it's like I know he ain't bringing me way out to L.A. just to lose. So that's one thing. And then also another thing is, like, having talks like this when other guys are walk watching who may have been through similar or be going through a similar situation, 
it's okay to seek help. Like I've been in therapy now, probably, what do you think, like, since September? September, October? And this is like my third therapist. Like the first two were just, they trash. And it's okay to not vibe with your therapist. You keep going till you find somebody that, that gets you. Because Kev is right, like, you know, past relationships will do that. But if you don't actively seek the help that you know you need, then you're, you're part of the problem as well. Mm-hmm. You have to go out and have these conversations with somebody that can help you peel back these layers. And I'll be honest with you, like, I didn't know. I thought a therapist in the black community and a lot of communities of color, we were like, yo, you don't take family business outside the house and talk to oh, some stranger yeah. about what's going on in this house. Sometimes you need to. Sometimes you need to have an unbiased opinion. And I'm right. going to tell you another thing. Like, I was completely ignorant to the fact. I thought a therapist would, um, I thought a therapist would tell me what to do to overcome my problems. They don't. A therapist literally just asks probing questions to help you peel back those layers and you figure out what's possibly going on. So they kind of help guide you through the process, but they're not going to give you the answers. They help you work through the answers. And I felt that was essential to my professional life and more so to my personal life to figure out what is going on with me. Like, You ain't lying, bro, because I... I thought I was going to go to therapy and the therapist was going to fix me. Like, okay, I'm going to tell you what's wrong. You're going to tell me what it, it, it is. It is. It's not like that. And then you realize too, when you're in there, how much of like, how it all is, is, is interconnected in your life. You know what I'm saying? Like things that you didn't think affected you really did. Like, cause for me, it was all pushed down everything push the feelings down. And really I, I pushed them down to the point where I never even acknowledged them. Right. But it didn't mean they weren't affecting how I was living my life. I just wasn't aware. Like if you watch the Kevin Hart documentary, he tries to convince us that he was not messed up about his relationship with his dad. And it's like, nah, bro, you, you are though. Yeah. Like I think you probably drink too much partially because you're not trying to think about this. I mean, I'm, I, I'm not a therapist, but I'm like, you are you you trying to convince us you're not affected? You are though, bro. You just don't realize how you're how you're acting out. Like for me, my parents weren't really supportive of my sports. Like I used to play sports like crazy. They would never come to any of my games. So I talk about this on the Righteous and Ratchet all the time. So I was like, all right, bet. I'm gonna be like, I don't even think it was a conscious, I'm gonna be this great comedian or nothing like that. But low key later in life, I was like, I think if y'all since y'all didn't come, I'm going to prove to you what you missed out on. Look at all these people following me. Look at all these people at my shows. Look at these wow. thousands and thousands of people. Now, now y'all start to pay attention. And y'all should have been on this train. And I was just okay at basketball. We're being honest. I wouldn't have came to my games now. I was just, I was, <laughs> I was just eight and three. But right. that wasn't the point. Like, you should be in the stands whether I'm trash or good. You know that's what I'm saying? That's a big part so, of why you go to all your kids' games, huh? And that's why. And, that, and my kids don't even be, like, um, I don't know if they, they are not as effective about it as, as I was because my parents weren't a, a part of my life in a lot of ways. Like this isn't like negative. They were, you, when you're poor, you just got to work and put food on the table and we, they didn't really have time for much more. That's okay. why I was talking to this about to talking to David. So about this, he said, I think black parents and poor parents in general, they beat their kids, not because they wanted to, but because beating your kids is the most efficient way to, to punt, to, to raise them because when you have to talk to them, to raise them, it takes a lot of time. But if they're going to be home alone, fear is going to have to keep you because I'm not going to be at home. So if you fear getting beat, then you just going to have to fear me. Because talking to my kids, I really got to sit down and here's why you do this and here's why you don't do that. But I actually have the time to do that. My mom, was she was working three jobs when I was a young kid. She didn't have time to do all that, all that stuff. So I'm going to beat you and don't touch nothing because if you touch it, I'm going to beat you. And like, man, if she beat you hard enough, you'd be like, all right, man, I'm not going to do none of that because I can't get yeah. beat. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's kind of how it, that's kind of how it is for them, for us. That's, uh, man, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this I, took a hell of a turn. Hey, hey, this is what happens when you bring me on your podcast. We be, they be having me crying on Righteous and Ratchet and the Love Hour all of the time. Really? Oh my God. I'd be crying. They'd be like, feel your feelings, Kev. Feel your feelings, Kev. I'd be like, nah, man, I'm a real one. But then I'd be you guys, but you guys, you guys enjoy therapy now though, right? Yeah, it's integral because you don't realize how, like, okay, so boom, check this out. I told Melissa this when we talk about something, Love Hour. 
I try to get Melissa to come to all my meetings in Hollywood, stuff that don't have nothing to do with her. Generals, this, that, this. So I was talking to my therapist about it. And then I went and told Melissa, I said, I think I'm trying to get you to do what my parents didn't do. Like, I just want somebody in my corner. Because you know Hollywood, bro. You know they're trying to get you. Like, yeah. you know all these meetings. They're trying to play you. They're trying to beat you out of some bread. So I'm like, I think I want you to come with me so I can feel like I got somebody in my corner, even if you don't know what's going on, what the meeting's about. Like, I feel like at least somebody's in here on my side and you're like low key the person in the stands. So I'm like, Melissa, come to my show. She's like, yeah, I got the kids. I'm trying to make sure the boys have some stability. And low key, I'm like, oh, maybe I'm like in therapy. I realized maybe I'm trying to get her to do what my parents didn't do. But that's an unfair ask of her because she's trying to raise kids. She's trying to do her own thing, live her life. And I'm trying to go back and, and repair what somebody didn't do in 1992. And my parents are like, the crazy thing is, I don't even be mad at them now. Like, we have a great relationship. I don't even be, like, upset. But I do hold that against them. Yeah. And they didn't even know. Like, I don't think they knew how important it was for me at that time. Mm -hmm. But I was really – because the other part is, bro, other kids' parents was all up and through them games. Yes. And I'm like, bro, y'all don't, y'all don't have to come to the – just come to a couple, bro. Y'all came to zero? Bro, my, my really mom cool. never came to any of my school performances, right? She knew I was good at acting and theater. But she never came to any of the performances. She would always make it to my younger sister's performance. My younger sister, Melody, my younger sister, she was playing. We were talking about playing kids and all of that earlier on the other podcast. My younger sister was playing. Her, my mom yeah. and, and her dad planned her. And so – they literally went to all this stuff. Even after they broke up, they went to all this stuff. One time, my mom couldn't make it. My mom, this was the first time she bought a camcorder and had me leave school early to go record my little sister doing Lion King at her school. So, like, this is the stuff I was looking for, too, and I never got it. And I remember one time, I think it was my senior year in high school, and I showed my sister's dad that I had got all A's. I was like, real, I got all A's. He's like, okay, good job. And I just looked at him and he was like, Robert, when you, when you constantly do what you're supposed to do, you don't get praised for it. That's just what we expect of you. He's like, your sister was different. It didn't click for her until to high school. So we had to put in that extra love and the extra time, the extra attention for her because she needed it. But you were always on auto control so we, I mean, autopilot. So we never had to do that with you. And I, I got what he was saying in that sense. But at the same time as a kid, it was like, I was looking for that. Yeah. Like I was, I was hoping that one of them would surprise me. So I caught the bus, literally public bus to my eighth grade promotion. I went by myself. What is that? Like graduation from middle school. Because in, in St. Louis, middle school goes from six, seven, eight. And then high school starts at nine, 10, 11. So I literally called the bus from East St. Louis, Illinois. I called the Rosemount bus to the Metrolink, the Metrolink to St. Louis, that's the train, and then called the, uh, the Jefferson bus from Union Station to my middle school. And that's how I got to my, in a, in, in a suit, by myself. Jesus. Because my family, they weren't available. Hmm. So it was, it, but I, so I, to, to what you're saying, Kev, I completely get, that need for gratification and uh, and just emotion and affection because I, I I couldn't identify with it either. Man, that man, that was that's that's a all good talks. So I feel like I wish I had more to offer. <laughs> you were supportive, Pat. That's, that's yeah. all, sometimes that's all you got to do is be like, take your time. I got you. Sometimes there's not a right thing to say. I was just trying to talk, so I know you probably was feeling uncomfortable with everybody looking at you. So but I you just, know what, Pat? Like, I appreciate, like, I know I wasn't a great dad when my family first moved in. I didn't know how. I was, my, I was basing everything I knew off of what I had did with my son for four years when he was in my life, and then Cosby. Like, the Cosby show, that's all I was basing off of. So talking to friends like you who readily spends – like, and, and, and willingly spends time with your parents, I can only imagine that's because of what they invested in you and how you were raised. And then watching Kev, how he interacts with his kids, made me want to be better. And my fair to tell you, man, like, I was a hard ass. 
when they first moved in, I ran this house like a like a prison. We like, used to I didn't have know a shelter here, like bro, this is a child, man. You gotta you gotta chill. <laughs> I've tried to get rid of this dog so many times, and I did, to me, it was it, he wasn't even like a thing. He was, just, I mean, it wasn't like a an attachment, like an emotional attachment. He was just a thing that requires money and time. It took conversations with Farron and looking at it, removing myself in the equation and putting myself in Farron's shoes or, or, or the kids' shoes to realize that it was more than that. And talking to you, Pat, and talking and, and watching Kev is like, like, oh man, like it's, you realize that life can be more than what you were exposed to. And if you can make somebody's life better, regardless of what you went through, then you should do that. And like, I've, I feel like the last six months, I've seen a, a dramatic change in my energy and my, my efforts toward, my, my, toward the kid. Just trying to be more present, trying to be more interactive. Uh, Farron had sent me this article about how dads, when they get home, they go spend you know, an hour in the bathroom and how the time has been increasing. Like, we went from 15 minutes to 20 minutes to 30 minutes in the bathroom. Now they got Netflix, you know, people are standing, the guys are standing in the bathroom for, you know, an hour at a time. And it, like, kind of gives the notion that the the mom or the wife has to do all the domestic stuff and be the parent and all that type of stuff. And I've never even looked at it like that. It was just like, all right, well, this is my decompression time. I just came home. I've been filming for six hours, seven hours. I just need this time to myself to get back. Right. And that's not wrong to want or feel like you need that time, but it also kind of gives off the preconceived notion that, you know, the mom does all the domestic stuff, the cooking, the cleaning, and getting stuff together and spending time with the kid. And then the dad just comes in, like, hey, all right, guys. Time. Mm -hmm. Huh? And she works too. She, 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 fan works long hours. She puts together amazing events. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give her the platform right now. Shawty was the handler for Jay-Z, Beyonce, Snoop Dogg, Pharrell. She puts together these multi-million dollar events to raise money from cancer. Before that, she was working for another nonprofit where they uh, rode bikes literally through different cities of a state. Like they rode from San Francisco to LA and she's the person that like drives like the, the pickup truck with the trailer on the back with the extra bike parts and all this stuff. She's dope. Okay, well, she, she and she's doing right all there. of this and still coming home and putting dinner on the table and all this type of stuff. And I'm going to the bathroom and scrolling Instagram and Twitter, look for a video to do for the next day. Yo, and my wife it, told me I had to pull myself out that. of that and like be a better person because I was messing up. And you my gotta be able to, 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 to call yourself on that. My wife was like, I was like, man, I'm, I've been working all day. I've been on the road. I'm tired. She said, like, I've been working too. Mm -hmm. I worked and I picked up the kids and I'm cooking dinner. You think I didn't work a full-time job? And I was like, oh my God, you absolutely worked a full-time. I, I apologize. I Other stuff happened again. <laughs> other stuff happened. Because yeah. I was like, but I got to drive an hour. She's like, yeah, but you, you drive an hour from ADD, but I go pick up one son, pick up another son, drop this one off at practice. I'm spending an hour in the car. You just spending an hour on, on, uh, on the freeway. But then when I get home, I go immediately to work and you go to the bathroom. I mean, I was doing the same thing. Let me doo-doo. And, and look at some videos and blah, blah, blah. And I was feeling a little elitist. And part of it was patriarchy, feeling like I'm the man. I come home and didn't be ready for me. That's some yeah, that. yeah. yeah, but I wasn't making enough money. Like that mindset was built on the time when you, your woman didn't leave the house. You she made enough work, for her right. to not work, but I did it. So I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do a little bit more because we both, and to be quite honest, she was making more than me. So I got some nerve. She bringing in the bacon and the bread. I'm like, hey, here go a knife to spread the butter with. Shut up and you should be cooking dinner. I should be going in the bathroom and sitting down because I make more money than you. And she never played me like that. Yeah. And she, she was like, I made same way with fam, man. man. Like I I catch myself like, yo, I need to step it up. Like yesterday I cooked an easy dinner, just spaghetti and and and, and, and hamburger or ground turkey. But she's been cooking since the whole quarantine. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And oh, I've just been coming in and eat, oh, food's here. <laughs> And she's been holding it down, ain't never complained, ain't never done none of that, man. And like, even now, like, she's over there working. She, she works to five, and she's still working right now. Got up this morning, she was already working. I got dressed, we went outside, we worked out, 
She had a phone with her so she could still respond to emails while she's working out. Came yeah. back in, sat at the desk, worked out some. I mean, fitness working. We shot two episodes of Squadcast, and now when she missed, she's still working. Jeez. Like, man, she, shout out to Farron and Melissa. Shout out to Farron and Melissa, man. Man, Both women. Listen, bro. Both that's why. Women. That's why everything in my life she could have. I, I'm talking about if right now, if I was like, I got to give you every. Listen, bro, I would have no, literally nothing without her. Literally. No jokes. And now she's gotten to the point in her life where she could, she's been pitching me jokes that be killing. Mm-hmm. Really? At first she was just tagging because she would be at so many comedy shows she understood. Like, she wouldn't know I'm, I'm tagging. She would just be like, try this, or this joke ain't working like this. Now she was like, on this current set, which I can't wait to be doing, telling jokes again, <laughs> she's like, you should try this joke in that section. And I tried it, and it killed. And I came home like, listen, don't take my job. Don't take this from me. This is all I got. All I got. All I got. <laughs> she's on with stand-up and killing. I'm going to be like, it took me. This is my thing. <laughs> Melissa's, Melissa's episode of Wording is Hard is top three. And I'm going to be honest with you, Kev. I had a blast with you. She blew you out the water. <laughs> I'm not surprised. She is so funny unintentionally. I you know what I'm saying. I know. I I'm telling. I'm trying to tell her, like, girl, you gonna surpass me by and large. I'm well aware. But here's the thing. Farron gave me the idea for wording this heart. Wow. Really? Gave me the title. Everything. Wow. You know. Really. That's why. That's why I don't pull out. <laughs> okay. Oh my. This was so. This was so wholesome. You were <laughs> before that, you had to ruin it. You really, I mean, I was, I was leaned in, and you said that. I felt like I shouldn't have been that close. If by the way, your surprise party, by far the best surprise party oh, I yeah. ever been to. I <laughs> literally tell people about that party, like, yeah, you know, this place exists. You can have your own bowling alley. <laughs> I had a great time at that party, man. Nothing out of the ordinary happened. It was just a good time. Bro, I had never in my life had a surprise birthday party. She rented out a bowling alley for me. That's lit. Um, all my friends. I didn't know. First of all, I didn't know she knew all my friends. Okay, that's 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 number one. Uh, I walked in, saw all these people. I'm like, you know, such as such. How does this even? Everybody was there. Man, it was fantastic. The dopest thing, one of the dopest things, she she know I love music. I love music is intricate in every part of my life. We played our own music. I gave them the podcast, I mean, the, uh, the, I the, the, the playlist, and, like, it was so dope, bro. And despite Kevin on stage eating the top tier of my cake. Uh, I, I, I didn't think that wasn't going to come up. I, I was just hoping. Kev. You had a birthday party. There was cake. Who eats cake at a birthday party for the warm-up? And you were late. You, you missed the surprise. You walked in, said, hey, guys, went straight to the cake, ate a whole floor. You ate the whole penthouse of that cake. That's not what happened at all. That's exactly I, what happened. I, 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 and then you lied on camera. Can't I, waited at least, I waited at least 25 minutes before I ate that cake. <laughs> I was late because I was doing something with my kids. Then we had to feed them, and we had to vote that day. It was You're lucky lot. he didn't eat the bowling ball pin. You're lucky you <laughs> walked out with that. <laughs> you know, the worst part about that dog on cake, the, I'm going to tell you the worst part. Of, for, there's two things. First of all, one of the most amazing pineapple upside down cakes. I regret <laughs> I don't, don't regret that. I don't regret the taste of it. I do regret <laughs> eating it. But if, if I'm going to go down in history as the villain in his birthday party, at least the cake was delicious. <laughs> but the second part is any time to hear has a dog on a memory of that dog on birthday. Part of that is going to be, and then Kev ain't the top tier. But it's <laughs> always going to come up. Why it, wouldn't it? It is the quintessential Kev on stage, Mark. It will always bring a laugh to somebody. And, like, bro, I cannot, like, I'm not, I, 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 I pride myself on not being super sentimental and stuff like that. And I can do it easier with my friends sometimes than I can with, like, my loved ones. But, like, bro, the joy that you bring to people, Kev, and I, for everybody that's watching uh-huh. live and everybody that's going to watch this later, and I know this, this is going to mess Kev up, one of the greatest things about Kev is he doesn't know his own power. He doesn't know he's Thanos. He doesn't know. You, you don't realize that people just don't come out and fill up comedy clubs 
for just anybody, bro. I've seen Kev pack out clubs in places that, like, bro, on a Wednesday, sold out on a Wednesday. Wednesday is not a club night. Thursday is not a club night. Now, I sell out the comedy union on a Wednesday, but that's the one. And, I mean, that's 120 seats, 125 seats. We selling out 400 seats on a Wednesday, bro. And the fact that he doesn't know it or he doesn't embrace it, he doesn't act like it, uh-huh. makes him a superhero, bro. So the thing about the cake is, I ate it right, and then right after I nah, ate man. it, nah, take it. this, take this to the fat, to the face, bro. Oh no, man, I'm gonna hug you if you do this to me. I'm gonna hug you. When right, I, I quit. That's the new I threat. That's the new to hear threat. But no, but seriously though, the funniest part about the cake. Thank you to hear. I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me let me tell you the funniest thing about this cake. In my stupid, stupid, stupid mind, I really thought this is just another selection of things people will eat. No one will ever know. When I tell you guys, in all seriousness, the time from when I took that cake, ate that cake, and to here came around the corner was like a minute and 45 seconds. I you ate a whole that. top tier of a cake in a minute? No, no, no. I'm talking about from the time I finished the cake to the time to here came around. Oh. Was like a minute. I was like, man, that cake was good, man. All right. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna play bone a little bit. I'm gonna chill. I was chopping up with Josh. Josh was like, "Man, I think somebody saw you." I was like, "Bro, ain't nobody see me." He's like, "All right, man. I'm, I think somebody might have saw you, but I won't say nothing." Oh, so you Bro. knew it was shady? <laughs> no, I didn't really think it was shady because I, he was just like, "Kev, I don't know if that's the birthday cake." I was like, well, "That ain't the birthday cake, bro. Who would get pineapple upside down for the birthday? Nobody would." Bro, we talked about me loving pineapple upside down and raisin cake. I mean, carrot cake. It didn't click because I love pineapple upside down cake too. And I actually, I never got it as my birthday cake. So you was like, no, this is what I like. I'm going to get it. Well, there's two things I don't understand about this whole story. It's almost like if I wasn't there, I wouldn't believe it. It's unbelievable. (laughs) Two things. Number one, just to give everybody watching some context, there were wings, there was pizza, there was sliders, there was salad. There were meatballs. I mean, the spread was magnificent. And then within those things, there were options of each. Kev walked past all of that to get to the cake. Now, number two, you'd think if there was a culprit, Tahir would get to the cake and be like, what the heck? There's a slice missing. There's one singular portion that somebody went for. It was a whole floor a whole tier a whole roof he took the roof off he put the roof in the trunk <laughs> i'm telling you guys nobody sees <laughs> me but the top tier was was much smaller than the other tier it got progressively bigger as you went that wasn't like this 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 it was like mm, it mm. was like a snowman but you ate the head off <laughs> so, I just want to show everybody Farron because Farron never ever gets in the spotlight. So Ed. Hey. Ed. Hey. 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 How you guys doing? Man, up, you are Farron? athletic. You you got muscles in your shoulder meat. <laughs> yeah, <okay>. <laughs> you be over there looking at her and being out of shape. This is the same thing I do with Melissa. I'll be like, must be nice. Anyway, <laughs> Oreos. <laughs> <laughs> you know what is funny? You just attribute that that like that can't be me though. Like the, what you have, that's not me. So I might as well eat this bro that down cake. If she wasn't fit, I would have had a fit about her buying that savage Fenty. I'm like, what are you doing? But I was like, well, she can wear it. If mm-hmm. I would have put if I put something on that says savage, it'd be like, so nah, you to hear. Why would you put on savage Fenty? So here, you would be wearing Savage Plenty. <laughs> That's cool. It would have I mean, been, really it it been a Latin spellage of it. Sebas and the most civic. It would have been 16 words just to say those two words right there. <laughs> the show. It's crazy. Right, cool, cool, she, cool. She, she put it together, though. Hey. Well, this is fun, guys. Uh, this was great. I did not expect this to be. Y'all said 45 I, minutes. This, this, this is live. The, this episode might get cut right after we do that second ad, because me crying on the internet, uh, I am not feeling Let me tell you what to hear. Let me tell you what. Whatever you want to hear. No, no, no. Listen to me. Listen to me. Because I used to feel the same way about Righteous and Ratchet. Honest, friend to friend, because you had a real vulnerable moment, your true uh, scary squad will appreciate that moment with you. 
Do not cut it. Do not feel like you have well, to be. They already in- did. Uh, apparently, a lot of people uh, have either been through, uh, I don't know how similar, but just similar feelings. Yeah. Don't yeah. rob your fans of the chance to get to know you. Don't, because that forces you to only be able to be in performance mode with them. And your true fans, you know, the people on Patreon, the Scary Squad, like, and the people who just, you know, maybe don't have the money, but, but watch every week, they deserve to get to know you the person, not the performer. You you are more than your talent. You don't have to just be to hear more of the comedian, you know, the musician, the playlist giver. You could be to hear more of the person. And this is me telling you from me being you, not me like, oh, I know stuff. Because I'd be like, bro, don't nobody, people want to see us make you laugh. They don't want to care about our problems. And people be like, nah, man, like, we, bro, the, our, 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 uh, the, the right pack, they were like, bro, y'all on tour. If y'all can't make a bonus episode, we get it. And I'm like, nah, but but we promise you, we are like, bro, we get it. Like, we take your rest. And I'm like, nah, nah. yeah. And you don't expect because we're conditioned, like, we're, you know, performing. You pay, I give you jokes. If you're sick, that's why when you were sick in Virginia to here, that's why you felt like you still had to perform because we're conditioned that no matter what, if you pay, I I must deliver. But this, it was this, for the fans and for you though. Like I didn't want to get paid for that day and only doing one show. Yeah, to hear like, that's how like I like you know I, me, I like to work, bro. I'm like, nah, I'm I'm a oh, But when Tony, remember when Tony was sick, he couldn't do those shows, bro. I was, bro, I was like, Tony, I'm I'm gonna still pay you, bro. Like I know your life is still the same. You need this bread, like you deserve. Like he was like, I'll go, like bro. You need to you need to chill. Like I'm not tripping off that. And I think your fans, your true fans are going to understand. Of course, there might be somebody, you know, people who don't really appreciate you, but man, even Doughboy been helping with this. He was like, bro, I'm not tripping about nobody who ain't the true fans. Right. I'm not worried about people who jump in a comment here and there, don't watch a lot of videos. Forget them. They're not the ones that are going to support. They're not going to buy no merch. They're not going to join the Patreon. Like, in some ways, the casual viewer deserves the casual version of you. But your real, your real people who watch every week, who 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 were excited about wording is hard. They deserve to to see you be uh the the true version of yourself because they're the ones who sit here and watch this. We closing in on on two hours. That's great. That didn't even happen until the second hour. They deserve that, bro. I'm telling you, you don't have to always you don't always have to perform. They'll they'll allow you to be who you are because it allows you to talk about stuff when you ain't having a good day. Like when things are bad, you're like, man, this kind of sucks. This didn't go right. People be like, man, they be building me up. I'll be like, man, thanks. It's a great relationship, man. That's why I be focusing on the Patreon people. I don't want to put it like negatively, like if you're not on Patreon, you don't matter. But I feel like if you take money out of your pocket monthly, and and I didn't even have a huge drop off during the Corona, like people like, nah, you good, bro. Like we're going to give to your cash app. Like if you do that, you deserve to know me on a deeper level than the, the I'll just say the casual fan. Don't cut it, bro. I'm gonna put it up. I, the, the the Patreon's got it though. Yeah, but some of your fans just yeah. don't have the money yet. Like, remember, you're right, remember you're right. when five dollars was a lot to you when you you're knew right. Right. every second, every dime. Right. Like, there's fans, and this is why I chilled on that broke boy talk because I remember in my life where, like, bro, when you have thirty seven dollars, if you spend seventeen, like, you know how much is in your account to the like. Five dollar. Okay, I got thirty two right now, and yeah. if I buy a shirt, I got seven. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to punish people who are not who who are at that point in their life, yeah. but I do want to reward the people who who make that sacrifice. Because five, bro, we are the same price as Disney Plus, or oh, not Disney Plus, Apple Apple TV or oh, Apple yeah. Apple Plus. That's crazy, bro. That's true. And check your cash app. They've been blowing you up. Yeah, I've been seeing that. That's dope. That's so dope. Shout Thank out you. to you guys, man. You guys Thank you to crazy. everybody that said something, man. Um, I greatly appreciate it, man, because I am, uh, man, I, I, you know, go, go, all right. Oh, you know what? Hey. If y'all want a refund, I get it right now. <laughs> bro, bro, bro I get it. The last 30 bro, I looked under my sweater. I know y'all saw me do this a couple times. I was trying to check if I had a tank top. I wanted to do the same thing, but I realized <laughs> I didn't have a tank top. I am dying. These lights. I got all my lights right now. Bro, I got my lights, lights on. on. And Melissa just turned the heater on. We've been shooting this the room. On or something? Do we have to all suffer through this? I'm a, I ain't showing you the nips. I could go nip. Oh. If you want to see nip, and I could go oh, belly. If you want to see belly, oh. you you oh. want this? Oh, no. All right, then. You just get the top oh. and be happy with the top. 
Your chest look like scrambled eggs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sheesh. Yeah, I got a new show idea too, man. I, um, I, I was thinking about doing like the best of Twitter. Uh-huh. And just like pulling memes, videos, and, and gifts off of Twitter. Bro, let me tell you what. Let me tell you why that's a good idea. BuzzFeed, Shade Room, Baller Alert, Talk Soup, no original ideas. Yeah. Their whole doggone business model basically is gathering what else is hot on the internet. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. You, you have that, but... But funny. That's why me, you, and Pat can all have a side by side video of the same thing and, and watch the same. all three because we don't have the same point of view. We have hey. different points of view. Hold on, real quick, man. I'm going to use this moment right now to big up my motherfucking dog, Patrick Patrice Cloud. What I do? One of the most talented people I have ever met in my life. Sometimes as a, as a creative, you meet somebody that's so talented. I'll admit this. I was, I was threatened by Doughboy because Doughboy was so funny. When I first started working at ADD, nobody was roasting. I came in roasting everybody every day at lunch. I bet you regret that now. Bro, Doughboy got the glow and ran with it. And I was threatened by it. I felt some type of way. Patrick is the creative type to where you don't, I don't even feel jealous. I am more excited about what he's going to create the next day. I get excited about going to Twitter to see what video he's put up. Hey, One of the okay. most musically talented, comedic talented, all the shows that you love from ADD, great taste, Dance Break, um, uh, Roast Me, all Patrick Cloud. Bad jokes. Bad, jo bad jokes. Patrick Cloud. God damn me, he has a... Uh, What's the new uh what's the new EP up in the clouds? Pat? Yeah, Water Temple. No, no, Water Temple is the one before this. The new okay, one is I'm up in the clouds too, I think. Yeah. Uh, okay, bad. Bad, Patrick's bad. flow on that jump, yo. And then Water Temple. Come on. If you guys God. have not seen uh Patrick rapping like an Egyptian, <laughs> let me tell you something, bro. <laughs> yo, I showed it to Fan, bro. We was like, yo, this nigga on another level, bro. <laughs> I fucking love you, bro. One of hey. the most creative people I've ever met in my life, dog. And I am just privileged to have you in my my stratosphere, bro. You are, you. I literally get up, watch your videos, be like, I got a top hat, man. <laughs> I, was, I, gotta, I was just looking for my Protect Your Light shirt. Let me tell you something else. When I left ADD, <laughs> this is this is a compliment, but just please understand. <laughs> I low key had given Patrick my entire job like a cool year before I left. All there. <laughs> he didn't even realize it. He was like, uh, I was like, yeah, because uh, remember, he used to send me the notes for great taste. And I was like, Pat, just take a stab at it yourself. He's like, all right, all right. And then he, the roast me stuff, I was like, yeah, just do that. And then I started having the scripts. People were, Man, so bro, I used to be at my computer watching Curb Your Enthusiasm for like the last <laughs> six months. <laughs> bro, Pat had done everything. That's why one of the reasons that it was easy to leave, I was like, bro, Pat got all this. Like, the Pat. only thing the oh. only thing that made it hard was leaving the people. But to hear, I want to echo every single thing ever. I be looking at Pat, and I'm not even jealous in that sense. It's like God has decided, I'm finna give you, a, like, people be having stuff, I'm finna give you the, the, the like, here's what I'm going to tell he you. This is skeleton, he got the skeleton key to comedy. <laughs> this is Patrick's most amazing ability. If Patrick decided he was just going to focus on music, both either rapping or freaking jazz piano, he could have a whole career in either of those, right? Absolutely. Easily. If Pat just said, I'm going to focus on just my video content, whole career in that. If you want to just focus on gaming, whole career. If you want to focus on stand-up comedy, whole career. Like, people do what they do because they don't have the ability to do other stuff like i can play an instrument pat is a musician mm -hmm. there's a difference it's a huge difference when we I, rap not I, me like to hear you're actually a pretty good rapper i i'm not when we do the squad things i'll be like man yeah I I, I I stuck it in there and then when pat rapped even with the squirrel thing i was like yo this dude really be like for real rapping like you could just be a rapper it's and then you're handsome on top of that like you should be ugly the least God could have done is made you ugly or out of shape. <laughs> no. He gave him doggone decent Reese, looks. 
We try to take stabs at Pat's hair, at his fashion, at his nose. None of it works. <laughs> <laughs> the nose kind of works. Chicks be getting get Pat tattooed on their body, bro. Listen, let me tell you what, though. On that, that's one problem I don't. You know what my wife would do if somebody got the Kev on Stage logo tattooed on? Nigga, you trying just to get Just the logo? Me? Not your face? Just the logo? Just the logo. Not that. Anything, anything related to me, I would never post that. You got a tattoo of my stuff as a woman? Oh, no. I never saw it. What? A tattoo? Mm-mm. <laughs> you trying to get me stabbed in my sleep. Hey, man, <laughs> Pat is, here's the thing. I'm older than Pat. Definitely more life experiences than Pat. Pat is one of the people I love being around, bro. And it's Aww. not just like, it's not just the creative talent that he has. It's also the energy. Like, Pat is genuinely a great person. Like, energy-wise, like, everything, bro. Like, like, and I don't say, I don't, like, fair to tell you, it ain't a lot of people like that. Really, like, he's squirming, bro. He's well, squirming right now. <laughs> I like it. Oh, yeah, I know, because Kev would have closed. Kev would have, he would have, he would have uh, right now. I would much rather you roast me and then compliment me. <laughs> I, can, I can take a roast. I'll, I'll laugh along with you. A compliment is just like, ah, they're singing happy birthday to me. E, give me that. Yeah, feel like happy birthday. But you know what, man? It's, it's important that we give our friends and our people these flowers while they can still smell them, bro. Yeah. Pat, I love you, bro. One of the most creative people I've ever met in my life. I ain't gonna harbor on it. But, bro, dog, I just, you dope, man. You Thank dope. You, I love guys. you, man. And I feel I honored to work with you on the podcast on a creative tip on uh, doing videos on all the shows that we've done, bro. I, I be like, yo, I literally, there are a couple people who I think about when I'm making a video and I think like, will such and such laugh at this. And that's how I gauge if the video was done, if I'm a post it or not. I think Kim, I think Pat, I think Ryan Davis, goddamn me, um, and Tony Baker and a couple others, but mm-hmm. and it's not everybody for the same video. But I'm like, yo, I'm on my like literally. I'll do a video. I'm like, yo, I'm on my Pat shit right now. Or, I'm on my Kev shit right now. Like I'm like, yo, I'm, there's I'm been videos it. that both of y'all have made that I had in my phone to make that day, and then I watched yours, and I was like, well, they got it. <laughs> I just like, <laughs> like there's literally nothing I can add to this that will make it funny. <laughs> I do that too. Yeah, so I'll watch it I'll just, just, I'll be like, well, he has that one. He's there was one where this, this girl fell, and Tahir says she fell in pieces like the toys on Toy Story. And I was like, <laughs> I can't think of nothing funnier than that. So I'm going to just... People are just going to learn about that video. video. <laughs> That's one of my favorite videos. Man, that junk was so funny, bro. That's so funny, dude. I, I get it, man. And I'm, uh, I just feel blessed, bro, to... Bro, I was working at a jail as a teacher. Before all their digital. How can I get this to end? And I, I'm just, I wasn't even saying that. I'm just saying that's what I was doing before, and I'm just happy to be around y'all, man. That's it. Enough. I'm hot. <laughs> I tried to keep my shirt on for the fan. I can't focus when I'm hot. I, I've, been, I've been hot for over an hour. I can't think about nothing else. I feel myself sweating. I feel sweat going down my armpits. Bro, <laughs> I got on a sweater. I know, I'm right? dying, it's bro. Well, we can go ahead and, uh, and, and wrap this up. Uh, obviously, after this uh, incredibly amazing episode, I just want to make sure um, you guys know I love the hell out of you guys. Oh. And I'm not, no, 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 I'm not doing it because I hate it, Kev. I'm not doing it, but I hate it. But just to call back from earlier, I just want you guys to know, I ho- hopefully it's, it goes without saying, but I'm going to just say it. You guys can hit me up for literally anything, ask me for anything. If I got it, it's, it's done. You don't even got to think about it. Just want to let you, that's it. That's it for me. Okay. Uh, also, let me say this, man. This is it. And I'm about to go. I love my groups of friends, my group of friends. Because when Farron was playing, planning the, the surprise party, like she literally said that, because this is what she does, plan events. She literally like, like everybody asked me if they could bring a plus one. They just didn't pull up. And she was like, even Pat, like Pat was like, yo, you mind if I bring my friend? And it was like, yo, the fact that I hang with a group of people that are that respectful, that like thought provoking, that they just have the wherewithal to to do that, man, I love y'all, man. Bro, I'm telling you, I was not going to miss your birthday party 
for nothing. I and I have missed some parties. I missed some celebrity stuff. I just be like, man, nah. But your party? Mm, mm. I'm rarely early to stuff. I, <laughs> I was there on time. There. Yes, Matt was there on time. This is very true. <laughs> I and I wasn't that I late. Walked in with to here. <laughs> like, what are you? What are you doing here on day? I, I, uh, Pat, I mean, uh, Kev, you didn't miss much because I literally walked in. That was a Tuesday, wasn't it? It was on a Tuesday, bro. That was my shoot day too. That's part of the reason why. That's my my big podcast shoot day. Then we had to go. We had to go vote, and that was. It was a whole thing. Usually we vote absentee, thing. but okay. we're about to move, and my wife had thrown away the absentee ballot, so we had to actually physically go out and vote. And I can't even remember the last time I did that. It was a lot. So if this was anybody else's birthday, I'd be like, bro, you just got, I'm not going. And it was all the way for real in Glendale or Pasadena? No, no, it, bro, it was, it was in between Pasadena and Arcadia. I mean, yeah, uh, I was like, we're still Arcadia. going. What is that? Uh, Akuza. Yeah, it was, it was in Pasadena, but it was like the edge of Pasadena, like close to, what is it? It's Azusa. It Azusa. That man said it? Yakuza. It was like it was the Japanese. It was the Japanese. Young <laughs> Uh, well, it's close to Arcadia and Pasadena. It wasn't close, is what I'm saying. Kev, you like, you got them things on you right now, my boy. Them titties is just moving, my boy. I ain't gonna hold you. Kev need a hold the ones, I'll be throwing them at the screen like, all right, little mama, hey, what you gonna do with that, yeah, though? Bro. Drop the you, OnlyFans. Hey, <laughs> you like, you need to be milk right now, my boy. Kev got them titties sitting high. Them Love y'all. Hey, Love y'all. Your titties is tittying right now. <laughs> <laughs> Aha, fat. Yeah, this is way better than <laughs> the other stuff. Did he leave? <laughs> Did this nigga leave? That's what y'all get, and I'll do it for real. Say something else, and I'll go. I'll go for real. What? What did you left? I'm back. <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> thank everybody for watching. This has been this has been different. This is one of the best episodes we probably had. Thank you Hell to everybody yeah. in the Patreon. Uh, obviously, the people who are just you know watching damn internet, internet you scary week to week. We love you guys. Um, clearly, this is a different group of people. <laughs> this is a very different bunch of people that we have with us. So I'm really appreciative for that. But um, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, another episode of Damn Internet You Scary. Thank you to our host, Kev, on stage. Thanks to here for sharing all that, too. Yes. That was yeah. awesome. Well, Kev! I'm all done. Right. I don't care what y'all say. I'm hot. Well, I'm, I've been your host, Patrick Cloud. And I'm to here more, man. We'll see you oh. next time. Okay. Uh, and Damn Internet You Scary. <laughs> <laughs> all right, y'all. All right, peace. All right, guys.